Well, we got 121 in here right now. Welcome everyone. It's good to see everyone can join us. I guess we can give it a few more minutes, let everybody kind of load up, and then we can get started. However y'all want to roll with this. Oh, man, we can make some small talk right now. Anybody got something pressing they want to talk about or ask? It's, uh, we got a lot to discuss in this video, and it's probably not going to be the only video. But, uh, you guys already know I'm a, I'm a man on a mission. And uh, Martin's been on this mission for a while, too. I've been learning a lot more about his history and how some of these other truther channels got their start. And some of this has been blowing my mind, man. This uh, was, you know, I'm new, to, I'm new to the game, so a lot of this is new to me, but I've also been deep in it. I mean, things are, things are beginning to make sense. You know, I, I've shown you guys pictures of operatives that showed up on my property in black hats and black, and black backpacks. I showed you, told you the story how, how I was paid $4,000 in front of Martin, in front of Cheryl, in front of Don, in front of the owner of the, uh, what was it? Tex Texas, Texas Steakhouse. Yeah, Texas Longhorn Steakhouse. Oh, no, no, no. I was paid that just to take their faces off of YouTube. This made it. This goes deeper than that. I, I've even learned more elements about this rip, this story here that unfolded. It's all. Uh, it, hey, the situation is real, my friends. The the um, we're not we're not we're not going to get bogged down in that BS of sit of basically going to war with True True Channel. No, all we're doing is in passing, letting you guys know what we know. And letting you guys hear what we suspect. You make your own opinions. You all that you know. It's not about that. We're not trying to tell you who to watch and who not to. We're trying to open your mind and to how deep this shit goes in this truther community and how intelligence operatives are everywhere doing fomenting all kinds of confusion. How even people that were very dear and close to me that my channel supported, they were on my channel, you've seen their faces, have totally done a 180 degree turn and are now producing content against archaics. This shit's real, guys. It's real. This is a spiritual info war. That's what's going on, guys. Okay. Heck yeah, brother. Inf information is my currency nowadays. So mm -hmm. that's what I think yeah. is very important, having the information and let everybody make your own decisions. Yeah, man. Yeah. So we're waiting for more people to stack up, but it really doesn't matter. This is going to be, we're going to, we're not going to put this on our caves TV like we put a lot of these. This is going straight to YouTube. So okay. uh, I will say that in the past I've had problems. I'm going to go ahead and tell them before we go into some of your, because you got some pretty interesting stories, man. Sure, I'm going to tell them about uh, Benjamin Owen. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I recently, well, not recently, but a few months ago, you know, guys get triggered when they hear, hear my criminal past, and uh, some people take it to a whole nother level and try to pretend that more happened than actually did happen and, and, and try to accuse me of more things that are actually on my court documents. But all that's good. I've, all, I've always been open to the scrutiny. I don't care. I've always been pushing forward. Remember, for the first two and a half years of my channel, it was not called Archaics. It was called Jason Brashears. My channel has always been about open disclosure, and I have never tried to hide from, from my past or, or basically anything. So there's a lot of channels out there today where people hide behind a, a effigy. They hide behind an image. You don't know who they are. You don't know what their identity is, yet they're producing content. But as I tell you all the time, guys, we have to judge things by their effects. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video, judging by effects, what's really going on. Well, what we can see is some pretty profound revelations. But concerning, concerning Owen Benjamin, he's a... Uh, he kind of got kicked out of Hollywood for you know telling the truth. He kind of he offended the tiny hats, you know, lost his his Hollywood career. Um, he's got a passion for the truth. Now, am I gonna am I gonna sit here and plug him? No, the man doesn't like me no more than I like him. I don't like his style. I don't like I don't like I don't like the pretense of spirituality at the same time as just decimating other people. You know what, man? I'm not with it. I'm not with it. But that's his personality, and there are many people who like him. So I would never try to detract from that and try to say, hey, man, you guys need to quit listening to Owen Benjamin. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let you know that my personality makeup is not going to get along with his. But I will say this, uh, much kudos to the man, because 
I guess after long, long thought and after coming into contact with so many people that told him about me and, and my stance on certain issues, that he did a deeper dive on my history. And he just turned around and told his community the other day that, hey, man, you know what? Uh, I've been wrong in the past. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of being, admitting to being wrong. You know, sometimes I get real passionate, especially when it comes to uh, if I find out somebody's involved in sex crimes and stuff like that. I get real passionate. And uh, before I look into all the details and I go on the attack, it's just my nature. And he's not wrong for that. But he did apologize to me on live on a live video with a lot of people watching. He apologized in front of his own community. You know, and that does mean something to me. Does it mean we're going to be doing podcasts together? No. But it means that he's somebody that I'm more open to and more receptive to now because he does have he does have that quality uh, in him that allows, allows me to trust him more than when I did when he was just openly attacking. So I just let, I just let you know, that was a very recent development. Uh, I've had some pretty good news lately with... With, with the shout out by David Icke in his book. And uh, Greg Reese and I are probably going to be doing some videos together. Uh, he and I are in contact now. Uh, he recently did one with Logan of Decode Your Reality. But yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So the, uh, the Owen Benjamin deal is dead. Now, I'm not talking about Benjamin Balderson. That's another story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me and Benjamin Balderson just may end up putting knots on each other if we ever see each other in public. But uh, Owen Benjamin, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. Me, he and I are all right. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, I'll say one thing about Owen Benjamin, though. I kind of feel like he's a gatekeeper, regardless of what he says, but that's just me from looking into him long enough. Yeah, well, he admitted uh, it. But who knows? That takes a lot. Well, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. He neither here nor there. He did admit to a mistake. Yeah. But as far as being a gatekeeper, uh, like I said, I have to judge things by effects. He did offend the one group of people that you can't you can't offend or you will lose your career. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's uh that kind of speaks volumes to me. Um, we already know about the tiny hats. We're not going to discuss them here because this is this video is destined for YouTube. So it's not that's not a subject matter. But but yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that that one, man. But I do know he's uh. I don't think so. He's very opinionated. That's for sure. Yeah, it kind of swings with the wind, like Mandela effect, um, Christianity, a few things that he just kind of way off, and it's just like the one video to to him to his whole audience. And this one I stopped watching him was he used uh, what was that movie? Um, uh, Field of Dreams. Used the field of dreams, made a whole long video about the field of dreams, proving that's why the Mandela effect is not it's not even real. Field it and he will cut. Yeah, yeah, and he tried to explain why why uh, um, writers in Hollywood would have made it how it's been changed now and and before what it was before, and like this long old video, and it just sounded so just like ugh, I don't know. But he also, you know. The whole Christianity thing, which, of course, we're not going to talk about here, but he kind of tries to stay on course with them, it seems. But I haven't watched him in a while. He could have changed. I'm only going off what I knew a couple months, a few months back. So, Well, there's a whole lot of Christians that stay on course with with, with Christianity. That's why they're Christian. I mean, yeah. this is what they believe. I, I was one of them for a very long period of time. So. Well, he's a flat earther, and he said the Bible brought him to flat earth. The guy, you know, it's his business Real. anyway, his yeah. system. Yeah. His so well, uh, uh, I was I was listening to I was listening to Martin tell me a story the other day because I had gone to this channel on YouTube and I was literally baffled because we do research together at the table. We pull out old books. We're going through things. Just uh, we have a book on 1893. What was it? The the Oh, the great, oh, the Columbian Exposition. Yeah, the great oh, Columbian Expo, uh, Expo, Expo, yeah. Which, uh, weird, after they built this huge city in Columbia in 1893 and have a world fair there, and everybody goes over there, right after it's over, the excuse that none of it's there anymore is a hurricane took it away. We have this book, it's huge, full of pictures of the world fair yeah. in 1893 in Columbia. It's, it's crazy. No, it's the Columbia Expositions. It was in San Francisco. Oh, it was in San Francisco? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a... Uh, yeah. It was the biggest after it's crazy. the Crystal Palace one in London, the biggest in the world. It's so crazy. We're, we haven't started that book. We're going to go through it and take all the pictures out and all that. But I was going through YouTube, and I seen this channel, and I asked Martin, 
man, who is this dude? I've never seen his face. I'm looking at I'm looking at the videos, and this dude's getting half a million views. This dude's got a tremendous amount of subs. I've never heard of him before. He just popped up. He just appeared about a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. And and it's like he had no growth. He was just on the scene all of a sudden. He goes by by Jared Boosters on on YouTube. So I'm looking at these videos. I'm like, damn, it's just. It's like John Levy videos. It's like Robert Seifer videos. It's a whole bunch of pictures with a narrator. You don't ever see his face. You don't ever see who this guy is. And we know the history of Robert Seifer. Yeah, we can we see the growth in his videos from his earliest videos. You can see this. You can see it with John Levy. You can see it with Martin's. Martin's got five channels. You can see it. But you can see it with Archaics. You can see me doing videos out of a wooden shack and an RV in my first hundred videos. But... This Jared Boosters, he pops up onto the scene. It's like YouTube promotes him, YouTube pushes him, YouTube, YouTube just gives him all, all this amazing uh, everything. Everything. He gets everything. Yeah. Almost every video goes viral. It's, it's amazing. And he's not doing anything different than Martin, our autodidactic, no. Robert Seifer, John Lynn. He's not doing anything. I bet you all of us had showed them images that he'd be showing recently. Well, well that's so what shocked me. Have. That's I what have. shocked me. When I mentioned Jared Boosters, Martin so went off. I, I posted um, on one of my Flatter Day shows, there's like literally a couple, there's thousands that can verify this. I showed the oldest images shown of Iran, a collection, and I linked them up in my descriptions box like I always do. Uh, a few days later, he comes up with the exactly, so we used them photos, t entitled it The Oldest Pictures of Iran, and got like 500, no, what was it, 850. 800 and something thousand. Yeah, nearly a million views. Guys. For some of you that so don't quite follow my brother here and don't understand what he's talking about, <laughs> I'm going to tell you now, it was strange. That was great. Listen, I'm going to just tell you it was strange. Process what, what Martin's telling you. Three or four days after he posted a whole series of pictures called the oldest pictures in where? Iran. Iran, the oldest pictures in Iran, Martin doesn't get any traction. He gets his normal views, normal feedback from the community. Three or four days later, the exact same pictures with the exact same title show up on Jared Booster's channel. Unchanged, he gets 800,000 views. It doesn't make sense. So but it does. It actually does. You know, how many of these channels are the shit out of nowhere? We don't know who they are. They well, it makes sense from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. they never, you know, my suspicion is the people who are not part of the community, who are unapproachable, they're over there, they're too aloof and important for us to speak to somehow. You know, yeah, they're talking a load of, you know, big narratives. And the people that wake up early in the morning, and their job seems to be just to validate official history for some reason, mm -hmm. even though it's been proven over and over again to be faked and fabricated. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that's that going on. And there's a whole bunch of them out there being promoted. People can see, people can see anyway what's going on. It's just, they're confused. Is it true? Is there this thing? But it's my. Well, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm just going to say it. It's true. I'm going to say it. What, what, what we're dealing with here, in my opinion, is that basically if you're going to control a narrative, you need to hijack it. And if you have, if you have the ability to create a YouTube channel out of thin air and all of a sudden have so much traction and you just reach out and grab other people's content and you have 50 times the views as, as the channel that you took that content from, then this is YouTube or you or a intelligence apparatus working with YouTube that is allowing this, that's doing this. How else would it be done? Because the same algorithms that promote, like Jared Booster's, when, it, when, it, when on Jared Booster's channel, we see the exact same things that three days earlier Martin Leakey po posted. So the same algorithm, though, is suppressing Martin Leakey's channels. Mm. Martin Leakey's channel. Martin Leakey's. Martin here has been to Texas twice. He has been on road trips with me twice. We've been doing all kinds of things. And in this time, why hasn't his subscriber base bolstered? No, lower, than, ever lower since, than a year ago. Ever since YouTube took Martin's first channel, yeah. this is the way it's been. Yeah. It's like algorithm has targeted all his channels to keep it. 
to keep it suppressed yeah. while the material that Martin releases on YouTube it's ends up on other channels. Yeah. All these other, all these other, not all of them, not but a bunch of, of Tartarian, a bunch of flat earth channels have, have all this data, but you can look at the date on the videos and see Martin had it on his channel first. We just, we just looked, I just, we just. Yeah, he was just showing me five and a half year old videos about circuit, circuit board circuit cities. Board cities. Mm -hmm. They were on his deal. Five and a half year old videos on orphan trains, Tartarian history, all on Martin's channel. But, but the algorithm seems to suppress Flat Earth British and promote these channels where, where, like Jared Boosters, you don't know who it is. Right. You don't know if it's a whole consortium of agents all putting all this data harvesting from other channels. We don't know who they are. Who are these people? If you're Jared Boosters, you need to reach out to us and tell us your secret Ooh, because good. this shit's looking real suspicious. Hmm. I know this. I know this, and I know a lot of you can vouch for me. Hmm. I'm no genius. I've got over 550 videos total, and I have never had a video go viral. Yeah, no, ever. Me neither. Not even close to viral. 2,000 videos. Me 2,000 videos. I'm, tens, I'm a kindergarten. Tens of millions of views. No. Crazy. Crazy. I got like I got over 13 million views on my channel. Some of those views disappear because I de because I delete older videos, videos and when I when I take the old material out, I delete the intros, delete the outros, delete the call outs when I'm talking to people, and I'll put the video in a montage with a bunch of videos like dark scriptures that are all about the Bible, yeah. or a bunch of videos that are all about the Phoenix. None of my videos have been hidden from the public. None of them. They're in the montages now. All I did was go in there and re-edit them, take off the intros, outros, and all the call-outs and all the unrelated data, stick to the stick to the subject matter, and release it as a two-hour montage. Oh, so can I just uh, with addressing the Tower of Mudford let's up, Jackson? Yeah. Well, they have been trying to grab the narrative on this for quite some time. Like the literature that I bring out is highly suppressed. Even when I was publishing my book, my publisher's computer got hacked. And my book got completely scrambled. It took me six months to rebuild it. This is the sort of dirty tricks that are going on. Crazy. Yeah, um, there is a plethora of Tataria and Mudra mm -hmm. videos, um, excuse me, books available on Amazon now. So it's the literature, videos, where they're trying to take control of the narrative. And they're sticking crazy fucking shit in with this, guys. Yeah, with this subject that is not being researched and is not the narrative at all. Just made up silly shit. This keeps happening. You know, you know, you had a book published on this. But basically, yeah. he's saying he had a book published on this. Two. I've seen his two books. I have one in my library, and his published author on Tartaria and Flat Earth, and yet he's totally ignored by the Flat Earth Tartaria Society. Oh, flat Earth. So no, we're going to get to that. Ever. We're going to get to that in a minute about that convention going on. Yeah. Wasn't even invited. Yeah, that, no, that's right. weird in itself. Explain that. In so, minute, why? That's uh, weird. But yeah, you guys <laughs> know that recently. Not just one, but I have a second one now. Uh, he's on my radar, and he's produced two books. But you now, you now, you guys now, I've shown you that books about the Phoenix phenomenon called that. This other book changes it up and calls it the Phoenix event. I haven't done a book report on that one. That's coming. But he calls it the Phoenix event, and uh, both of his books were published in 2023. Here is another virtually unknown person from Europe, just like the first one was from Switzerland, who's popping up, and it seems to me that they're chi trying to change the narrative of what the Phoenix is for the German-speaking world. They don't want the Germans to know. They don't want Europeans to know about archaics and the Phoenix phenomenon. They're already, they're already in Dutch per, uh, publishing books on the Phoenix event, changing the whole narrative. So they're doing, to me, the same thing that they've, they've done to Martin for four or five years. You go on Amazon and look up Tartaria, look up all, all this flat earth, you're going to see. You have some genuine authors in the field. Eric this Dubay. This has more like eight years. Eric Dubay. Eight books, yeah. Well, yeah, well, Eric, yeah, he's Eric he's Dubay, he's, genu the same way. he's a genuine author, genuine researcher. He is a pioneer of the field, just like Martin is a pioneer of the field. But there's a lot yeah. of new ones that popped up that no one's ever heard of, and that's exactly what they're doing. They are mixing in absolute misinformation with all the correct data, 
and then not citing us for the correct data, just throwing it in there as if it's their research. And they say they tell me Barrick must drive him nuts, but he doesn't address it, he just lets it rise. Yeah. You know? And there's been a thousand videos that have done that. But as long as the troops start there, you know he thinks. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's all it's all crazy. Oh, okay. Oh. Flattoberfest. Okay. It, for, no, you know, we're having a meetup, and we're going to bring a bunch of unique personalities like Max Egan. Martin and Cheryl's going to be there. You know, Cheryl has her own channel, too. Uh, Danny of the Unfuckers, Removing the Shackles. Logan of Decode Your Reality. Uh, we're still we're still waiting on a final word from Autodidactic from but, Mark Campbell. I think I like But I think he's coming. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, y'all, you know, uh, Toltec Shaman's going to be there. Uh -huh couple other people we got a pretty light nice lineup it's gonna be a whole nine ten hour event directly across the street from my publisher um we'll, but at the exact same time in las vegas yeah in las gambling vegas. hall just yeah. the place you put a load of truth first yeah in a gambling hall at the exact same time we've got on the 21st uh, and 22nd of october flattober fest okay. if martin wasn't invited now, I'm never invited, but I caught a show the other day that I came up in the discussion of why I wasn't invited. Um, apparently, it's not really a thing to talk about Tataria around the Flat Earth community. Although, in the past, this has caused a lot of trouble and control to death. It's like you're not allowed to talk about any other fucking subject. So, um, but that's not the case because um, I've had two large conventions in the last two years in the UK where I hired um, Dave Murphy, allegedly Dave, um, Flat Earth Dave, um, and Mark Devlin, the famous Radio 1 DJ. He does musical truth, Dave does simulation, but it's not Flat Earth. So that is not the case. So it's, And then I find out that it's actually more personal because um, they will be having someone who's talking about Tataria, some fuck knows who, a name I've never heard of before, who will be brought in. Now, I was in the States at the time. These people are supposed to fucking love me and be my friends. It's just, what the fuck is going on? You know, I feel like they're just, like I'm blacklisted from Flat Earth. Well, I have an opinion in... Yeah, I was one of the first. My, my opinion in is that if, first of all, I am very suspicious of these event organizers. They may not all be intelligence operatives, but I'm I'm pretty no. convinced that most of them are. That uh, these these event coordinators they seem to pick like lukewarm uh, rep representatives of the genre that they're putting something together for, as if they don't want the the elite minds coming together. They don't want the greatest, the cream of the crop coming. Like, like wait, let me I'll give you an example. Martin's first trip to Texas. All it took was a two or three conversations on history, and he and I ended up going deep on the Great Wall of China and realized it was a Roman construction. Yeah. All it took was that one video, and it got the gears turning in Max Egan, and he went even deeper, and, and, and he went into Google Earth, he went into badass old pictures, and Max Egan found all the evidence that we didn't even know existed yeah. when we came up with our theory. The docks. Yeah. yeah, he shows underwater pictures of where hundreds of ancient ships docked huh. at the end to do exactly what Martin and I had theorized. The Amazon of the ancient world, sending all this cargo from the Yellow Sea all the way across China into the Middle East, into Rome, in, into the Mediterranean world. Yeah. Max Egan basically nailed the coffin on that uh, just after listening to our video. Yeah. This is what happens when you get free thinkers together. But that's not what happens when you get a controller who is picking and cherry picking which speakers they want at events so they can pretty much guarantee. I mean, let me give you an example. Benjamin Balderson, why would you want this man speaking and representing anything, anything that you have? Where it's almost intellectual vacuity. Why would you have this this individual who's not a researcher? I don't even know if he can read. Just parrots what he sees, watches three YouTube videos and thinks he's an expert. Why would you have this somebody representing a flat earth or Tartarian community? But this is exactly what Karen B is doing. What is it, San Diego, uh, uh, Los Angeles? Las Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas. The gambling hall. So, yeah, she's not the only one. I have suspicions about other event coordinators. I think most of them are intelligence ops. I think, I think they, they are paid by the intelligence community to do what they do. It's a part of controlling the narrative. 
leaving Martin out of the main genre that he initiated with the two or three other people, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. And my first book is called The Holy Grail and the Flat Earth. You'd think that the Flat Earth movement would at least mention it once. You hear that Globusters, huh? Uh, no, well, I went on Globebusters. I nearly ended the show. There was fucking murder. Uh, basically, Bob said it was the best Globebusters it actually had, but he got trolled chronically, Bob. And, uh, oh, Matt man, Bob. this is what happened to him. Yeah. He, he no, just recently. Yeah, he got Since he left. left. Yeah. Oh, poor Bob. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, upsetting. So that, that, that kind of leads into another deal. Somebody just mentioned Rex here. Was that Rex Bear? What is that channel? What is his channel? Because he, he's entertained guests that have bashed the shit out of me. But I don't know if he's ever bashed me. Oh, what is that? Oh, I, oh God, I know who you're talking about. Um, the Leak Project. Yeah, the Leak Project. There you so, go. Yep. So, Project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, here's another item. We, we kind of want, want the archaics and flat earth British community to be a little bit aware of. Okay. We haven't talked about this before. Well, we sent emails to a lot of people, both Martin and I. You know, I, I don't know if Cheryl's sending emails on your behalf, but I know no. Dawn sends. Dawn's pretty much my agent now. No, I she, do my own stuff. You, you do your own nah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So these emails go out from Dawn and I. You know what? There seems to be a behind the scenes in the truther community. There seems to be someone contacting other channels and basically. I don't know where they get their power from or why people pay attention to them, but it really seems to be that there's a blanket don't talk to Jason and Martin uh, Weird, isn't it? Like order out there. I mean, there's channels that I've had a really good relationship with in the past. No email, no emails are returned anymore. It's just blanket radio silence. You know, guys, the amount of channels I've asked, would you, you know, like, uh, do you want to come on my show and have a talk with me? You know, because basically you're talking about my subject and a benchmark of your work. And they give me like a sort of an apology, like it sounds to me like, no, I'm not allowed sort of thing going on. Um, and then they'll crank up like a week later in another hangout and then propose some craziness. Um, and that will be why. So, yeah, the whole thing is full of distraction and these pushed up and supported, uh, you know, anything that's got a bit of hatred in it, anything that's got a bit of fear in it, and they'll push. Some, Not all of these channels, some of them are just useless idiots that don't even know they made it, and they just keep on pushing the narrative, okay? And they're probably not on the books. But the rest, the smart ones, they fucking do it, I'm telling you now. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I honestly believe that there's, there's a lot of, Emails being exchanged behind the scenes, uh, and it's all the smaller channels, maybe up to 200,000, 300,000. Uh, the larger channels, the half a million to a million, they don't engage. Uh, punked, they're, well, they're well established. I but, punked uh, San Tripoli in one of his uh, AMAs where he did a lot, the only one I've ever watched of his. And then he was like talking to people, and I think he asked something about other channels. And I was like, "Oh, hey, by the way, I'm actually the one that got him on your radar, you on his radar, basically." And uh, he kept talking. He's like, "Oh, I'm not scared. I'm, you know how Sam talks. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I, oh, I'll check him out. I'll check him out." And I was like, "Yeah, I bet you won't." I just kept back and forth with him, just saying stuff like that because I kind of knew at the time what he was about. But yeah. I, and and he's never. I don't think he's ever contacted you, has he? But no, I said. He yeah, I spent yeah. 15, 20 minutes that day talking to him in that, that chat about you, and he never said a word to you. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's, listen, he's well aware of who I am. And as a matter of fact, I've mentioned him a few times. But Greg Reese recently, who's done a, uh, he did a really interesting video that, that went viral all over BitChute and Telegram, True Social, uh, uh, Alex Jones' channel. Uh, Greg Reese's video was about resets, and he featured my book, Anunnaki Homeworld, and how I had basically decoded the Mayan long count and showed that all the scholars were wrong, and that the actual long count ends in 2046. Greg Reese had fact-checked that, did his own math, and then contacted uh, several people about the issue and was convinced that I was right. And now, now Greg Reese has been plugging uh, uh, some of my other research with other people well, he, he totally surprised Sam Tripoli. I don't think Greg Reese knew that Sam Tripoli had a, had a stick up his butt for me because he's had one for a long time. And, uh, but you know what? I think um, uh, Greg Reese really surprised him because he, asked, he mentioned me twice in that video. 
So I don't know much about Sam Pribilly. All I know is the only thing I've ever heard about him was from people who sent me emails, and it was they were all in the negative. I don't really care. I really don't even care. I like Greg Reese, but I mean, I'll, I'll never fault somebody for who they who they talk to on you know a podcast and all. There's a whole bunch of people who don't like Martin and me, I, and I'm cool with that. <coughs> but it's the uh, tough. But it's real. This communication behind the scenes, this you guys know what it's called. It's called blacklisting. Yeah, blacklisting. This blacklisting is very real. You know, the reason I, I just want the reason I'm bringing all this out is is not because this is not a complaint video. This is a video that's basically informing our communities, our joint communities of archaics and everybody associated to archaics and Flat Earth British and everybody associated to Flat Earth British. This video is really just putting the community on notice that, hey, man, you got problems if you think you're going to ignore us. Mm. There isn't anybody on YouTube, I fear. No, I mean, I'd like to talk anybody's to any content. single fucking one yeah, of them. None of them. There, believe me. There's a history professor that just went on uh, our next level uh, soul uh, uh, broadcast. Yeah. That, you know, 800,000 views. Yeah. The next level soul, I know some of you like it. And I'm, let me tell you, I don't like the next, the next level soul podcast on YouTube because every single video they do is a fundraiser. So all I see is dollar signs here. I don't see anybody trying to really disseminate the truth. I also hear channeling, Galactic Federation, ancient ancient aliens. All this adult fantasy is promoted on our Next Level Soul broadcast. NTEs. But I'm telling you, I have somebody looking for this man's contact information right now. He's a history professor. He just did a video on Atlantis on Next Level Soul broadcast. I'm telling you, I'm calling him out publicly. I'm going to get a piece of this guy. He's going to debate me or I'm going to just dissect his video and embarrass both. The Next Level Soul podcast and this dude. You are not going to get on YouTube and profess to be a, a history professor and then disseminate that drivel and think I'm going to be quiet. It's not going to happen. So, but yeah, this is this is what this is what this is all this is. This is just a video. That, hey man, um, uh, our communities aren't going anywhere. You can ignore us all you want, and, and, and you might end up being on the wrong side of a dissertation because it's nothing for me to just single out any YouTuber out there who produces content mm -hmm. and dissect that and show how ridiculous it is. It's nothing for me to do that. And it's a, it takes a little time, but I'm not worried about that. No. I'm, 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 I'm pretty good at time management. Mm. Yeah, so, so Martin was telling me these stories, man. It's crazy how all this content he was producing, you know, eight years ago. But when he had a he had a huge channel, YouTube took it down. But he was he was producing all this content. Then YouTube takes his channel down. Then all of a sudden, all these other channels blow up with a whole bunch of his content. Yep. And and when he came back, he was never able to get where he was before. No. And you know what? I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say that that's wrong. That those channels took advantage of that. I'm not going to say that. Huh. Where, where they're wrong is, you guys know, in archaics, I'm real big about citing my source materials. If I find somebody producing material and they're not citing where they got that and you, we can see where they got that, it's not genuinely theirs. You borrowed it and you did, and you borrowed it without giving any credit. That's when, that's when I get pissed. That's exactly what happened in Martin. Man, there's a lot of channels you know, out not there. Not one of them subbed to me. Yeah, that's not crazy. Not one of these channels. Any of them. Flat Earth, Tatarian subjects, anything. You know, a lot of nobody bothers. Well, you, you ain't never going to do anything half-assed, and that's what I respect about you. And this is what you've chosen to do, basically, and try to bring this history out. So, you know, oh, I'm all on board. You know I got your back. Yeah, we need to bring this out to people's attention because a lot of people, you know, they'll just grab one subject or another. You mentioned one earlier, and they're just going to lose years, to, you know, going against a brick wall. And you know, this this is not helping anybody. You know, th this is obviously the place where some sort of operation is going to happen. This is the resistance. I don't see it anywhere else. And this is the truth for movement. So of course, there's going to be agents and operatives swarming around certain people, like um, like hornets around hornets. <laughs> yeah. Um, the chat feeds also. These there's people. I'm, I'm aware. I had evidence of back about five years ago. A list. Of all of the people that get paid thousands of dollars just to troll um, truth uh, chat feeds yeah. and spread malicious gossip and spread rows and make up stupid shit. Not only that, but 
Yeah. You have, but if you're if you have a channel on YouTube, you have to be very careful because a lot of these people who try to befriend you in the chat and try to watch your channel and say all positive stuff and get up, they're trying to get a blue wrench. They're trying they're trying to get a moderator's wrench, but they actually work for an intelligence agency. Yeah, well, yeah that's all this stuff is and, real. And then guys. they can fuck with your channel and move your comments and delete comments. It happens to me. I, I loads of times I got to get rid of all my mods and then add them again gently. Because so speaking from experience, guys, mm. Arcades had a problem about five months ago because that happened. Mm. It happened. A lot of people were complaining to me about getting blocked, and I know I knew these people didn't deserve to get blocked, and complaining about comments awesome. being their comments being deleted and all that. I it took me a, a minute, but I had to go in there and look at everything because I can go deep in my analytics. I went deep in my editorial tools on my channel and found the bastard, found who was doing it all, and I eliminated him. But yeah. Crazy guys. You gotta stay vigilant. I'm sure I know that all too well just by doing this Discord. You know, this was my breaking pattern, and I, I've learned, oh man, a great deal just by what people are capable of. Just by well, coming I mean, and talking, you know, it's like crazy. It's like, it's like this. It's like this. You got fake news, fake events, which are false flag events. You got fake Hollywood disputes between actors. You got fake moon landings, fake scientific discoveries, fake accidents. In assassinations where people don't even die, they're taken somewhere else where they live out the rest of their lives. They had to be removed for political reasons. Whatever. Fake scientific discoveries, uh, <coughs> fake history of books, tens of thousands of movies that depict fake events. About, about even things that in the, within the last 200 years of history, having everybody believe in a false version of World War One or World War Two, all this is everything's fake, guys. So you got fake social media accounts, fake bots. You got all kinds of operatives in the chat. If almost everything in the entire world is fake and artificial, then we're not trying to get on here and try to tell you guys that this is novel or this is. This is unusual. What we're basically admitting to is, until recently, we didn't realize how deep this shit goes. Even in the very community that is supposed to be opposed to all this. Yeah, the truth or community, most of it is fake. Fake as hell. It's crazy, fake, guys. Fake rock star deaths. Yeah. Fake, fake spiritual gurus. Pay me $800, go sit in the desert and watch an eclipse. Um, why, 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 um... Yeah, they're, they're really repugnant, actually, when they're all smiling at one another. They're yeah, all like, man. oh, we're so with nature, we're making so much money. Yeah, <laughs> man. Dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. There are literally people on YouTube that are famous right now that other people believe that, oh, these are agents of God. And I'm telling you now. They're channelers, yeah. and they sit here, and they come up, they got a high-octane imagination, they have a limited idea of world history and chronology, and chronology is how I catch these people. It's the only way I can. It is my forte. So when I hear these channelers talk about, oh, I received this, well, as soon as you tell me a false date that's easily proven to be false because you took your information from the Golden Dawn Society yeah. or the raw material or Aliester Crowley or you took it from you took it from Levatsky. Uh, I was about to say Helena Blavatsky. You 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 read the secret doctrine in Isis Unveiled and you borrowed that chronology. This is your version. The same thing that that the, the person that was feeding information to Edgar Casey did. The exact same thing. This is how I bust those channelers for lying. I just don't tell you guys about it. I'm not. I'm not trying to be an iconoclast and destroy everybody's fantasy. But you got to understand the difference between adult fantasy and fact. These channelers are deceiving the shit out of people, and they're getting away with it. More. This is entertainment for the collective. Nobody in the truther community should be listening to that drivel. It's all imaginative. It's, it's all crap. Any, any, I'm talking about the channelers that talk anything about the, the false Atlantis narratives, the false uh, uh, ancient aliens uh, uh, narratives and all that. Yeah, let me give you an example from the NDE universe. You know, I did two podcasts with very, like Jeff Morrow was one of yeah. them. I did another one with somebody else, and it was about NDEs. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, this yeah. was a year ago, yeah. and then again six months ago. Well, let me tell you how the narrative has changed since Archaics gave the whole spiel about NDEs uh, in the community. The community has shifted. Let me tell you how. NDEs, before Jeff Mara had me on his podcast, NDEs, every day he does an NDE. 
And all the NDEs are telling you, telling about these out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, what people experience on the other side. Sometimes it's soul trap theory. Now, remember, I even explained to Jeff Mara, hey, man, many times, man, it's all subjective. Because if somebody was raised in the Christian church, when they have an NDE, they saw Michael, they saw Gabriel, they saw Mary, they saw Jesus, they were at, they were at the party gates, or they saw hell, they saw demons, they saw torment. It was a frame of reference from their upbringing, the program they received. Proof of this is that if you go to India and you ask them, and if you watch YouTube videos from India, in the NDE videos... They say the same thing, but they see they see rakshasas, they see merits, they see Not they this. see shivas and nagas. They see it's all frame of reference. Do you think the underworld or the outside of our reality is compartmentalized so you only experience the things you were raised to experience? Hell no. The NDE is all frame of reference. This means that they're not dead. That's why it's called a near-death experience. They didn't die. Their soul wasn't severed from the, from the stimulation. Their psyche was still moored to it through the central nervous system. I'm saying all that now because on Jeff Morris' podcast, I gave a very long presentation that we live in a simulated holography and that the sim simulation has protocols and basically th there's, there are protocols that govern this existence and how we interact with it. Since I did that podcast, the majority of N NDE videos coming out, everybody sees simulation. Yeah. We're in a construct. I saw machine elves. Oh, uh, <laughs> one of them even mentioned archaics. Oh, I listened to archaic. Oh, I, uh, 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 I, uh, I had an NDE. And next thing you know, I, I realized that everything uh, archaic said is true about the simulation. I'm not even telling you everything I'm saying is true. This person says it because they had an NDE and it showed the whole holosphere, the simulacrum. They got, they understand. This is all simulated. This is this is because new information introduced into the truth of community spread, and it's now altering people's frames of reference. Those frames of reference are now being projected into the field, and now truth or channels are all coming out with with this is all simulated from the NDE perspective. This is just an example of what's happening. I didn't bring simulation theory to the table. Never claimed I did. All I, the only thing I brought new to the table is that I'm showing we live in a construct by using the mathematical perfection of world history. That's all I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's yeah, how do we get on NDEs anyway, man? Oh, everything is fake. Yeah, yeah. everything is fake. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's a lot of subjects that people get into and lose themselves. They remember all the Q narrative and things like that, and they just they come in, disappear, so well, to the, millions of people. Yeah, the work. Q narrative was, was actually the uh, Patriot Pacification Program, and it's where all these people pretending to be patriots, exactly. like uh, Juan O'Savin. You guys already know, I'm a critic of Juan O'Savin. I haven't even heard of Juan O'Savin lately, but uh, I'm a critic of Juan O'Savin. Juan O'Savin was all about the Patriot. The Patriot Pacification Program. Yeah. Him and a whole bunch of others trying to get all, all the Trump supporters to be neutralized because gun owners in the United States are the largest army in the world. Gun owners. Right here in the yeah. United States. So it's the largest army in the world. So you had to pacify them somehow. How did you do it? How do you do it? You remove Trump. And in those four years he's removed from office, what do you do? You fill the truth community with a whole bunch of hopium put out by agents agents who are there to pacify. It is the Bolshevik uh, uh, trust initiative mm -hmm. all over again from 1914, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. It's, yeah, it's the Bolshevik program all over again. Well, anyway, we're not, we're not on 107. He's old news. Yeah. Yeah, 107 really, really played his hand when when I was being critical of him, and all of a sudden he starts talking about giants and vapor canopy in the pre-flood world. I called him out on that. So you know. Right after I started criticizing him, this is what he was doing on other podcasts, talking about vapor camp. Yeah, come on, man, stop it. Yeah, I watched the video the other day that uh, Rosie O'Donnell actually brought him up. I was like, hey, that's crazy. She actually talked about that dude. So, yeah, you know he's deep in it. Agree 100%. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's all, uh, yeah, it's just, the whole thing's just crazy. But, you know, speaking of a very similar event, Martin here educated me on something that was very, I, was, I asked him about it because I knew there was controversy, but I didn't know what. 
because I remember AWAR and I remember this huge controversy where he put out this video and it went viral and all these people were starting to copy the video. Martin knows the story better than me. Fuck yeah, that was an expensive operation in itself. <clears throat> so, Ewar, whoever the fuck that is, brings out a book, The History so, of Flat Earth. So is this another one? Uh, the video, video. Is this history. another guy? We have no idea what his identity is? No. no. I think he's a black guy from London. Awar, Awar. So he could have been another operative. I don't know, mate. He's just shit. Oh no, he's done this series. But what I do know is any single channel that mirrored this video got blown up. I mean, they got tens of thousands of subscribers. They literally, the videos were pushed to between half a million and a million views for this, uh, you know, history of flat Earth, which was. Um, all the Tatarian mud flood and all of the electromagnetic model, uh, four angels, everything um, in this series, three hours. So this was shouted by all of the flat earthers, <laughs> weirdly. Um, but anyway, about see, this guy is associated with some people that really um, just their life seems to be to validate official history and try and undo, which they can't because it's already proved. Um, the reset theory or idea, okay, which is not a theory, it's proven. So, um, this guy then brings out a retraction video, goes completely turncoat, um, and uses like stupid shit um, evidences like a um, fucking A War. Jamie Robbins said that A War is Elijah Sebastian Castle. All oh, right, I don't know shit, mate, I don't know, I don't know anything about him. Um, but anyway, this second video. Elijah, all right. So um, it was um, a apparent try and debunk uh, Mudflood and Tataria by using the um, evidence of a cathedral that was built after the 1900s, which is something we never ever do because things were definitely built around that period. Um, and I knew about that one as well. I never ever touched it because I knew it was built. Um, but yeah, so that caused a lot of upheaval. I spent like a quite a bit of time cleaning up the mess on my channel. You know, people saying, you know, you're talking shit about because these channels, you know, there's a few of them, they're all flocked together. Uh, Ewar and Woody and the others. Um, and that's their thing, is to validate official history for whatever reason, which is weird. Somebody's asking about Dan Winter. I, I know the name, but who is uh, he? Yeah, yeah, who is yeah, he? yeah. I cited him in my first book, Dan Winter. I tried to basically get a hold of him to tell him that I cited him in the book. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he didn't respond? Um, no. I, I also, Ken Wheeler, I cited him in my first book too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I tried to get a response from him saying, like, look, I just shouted you in my book, blah, 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 but no, he never responded back. Ken Wheeler didn't respond to you? No, 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 no. A lot no, of people. Dan Winter. A lot of people have asked Ken Wheeler about Jason of Archaics, uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't see the comments no more. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I would really, really like for you to talk. That would be something else because Ken is like, he's super smart. That would be a really good conversation. I, I don't yeah, know. I don't it's know. Uh, well, we're very different. I've, I, I, yeah, I, I've I, actually shouted him out on my channel like four times where I've watched his videos and talked about some of the content, but I openly admitted that I believe he's far more intelligent than I am because I couldn't even follow some of the stuff he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, no me. I yeah, couldn't even no, follow. he's super smart. It's Jamie says E-War, A-War, E-War not are all the same dude. Oh yeah, that's right. They are all the same dude. Yeah, yeah, all the yeah, same yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to check it. Thanks for the name drop. I, I need to check into Dan Winter then. Because uh, you, you guys, I go with your opinion. Let me all say, Greg, Dan, Dan Winter's pretty interesting. We'll ch I'll check him out. He was e he was Ewar Anon. That was his first name when he made the uh, Lost History of Flat Earth. Like a long cool. series that he made, which I thought he he's a great, you know, I think orator. He it he was fantastic and everything. But then he came out a few years later and he pretty much changed everything. He was one of the big dudes that started the whole Arca uh, uh, Tartaria thing. Was he fucked? Really last on the Tartaria was thing was with AR. Was he fucked? He shits out of nowhere. No, I'm not having that. That's bullshit. That's bullshit, brother. No. Fuck. No. That didn't happen. What? I just shit out of fucking nowhere. With all of this, yeah, he was pushed up by certain channels, which gives me massive alarm fucking bouts, okay? This guy's not one of us. He's not one of the community. No, I didn't say he was. No, no, I'm not saying he is. You want no fucking... You want no maverick in this subject, guy, okay? He's just picking up on other people's fucking information. He just suddenly... Mine. He just suddenly appears. 
like a cacao. It's taking bits of everybody's information. It's not his research. I'm just saying what my personal experience was that he was one of the first dudes I saw talking about Tartaria and the detail that he that well, was. That's so a lot of people because you know every, every channel out there, of course. So, oh, but no, oh, I, I know he's not a part of us. Okay, he so talked shit about Jason on Crow Triple Seven. Actually, they never mentioned your name, but everybody knew who they were talking that. about. So. No, no, Crow doesn't like me at all. I already know. Yeah, I, I, got, I already got the whole business on that. No, coming on you. Oh, uh, a war. AWAR wasn't doing this in 2014, 2015, and 2016 when Martin already had videos out about this. You know what I mean? Bro, I got seven-year-old videos about the great expositions of Circuit Cities or Antiqua Tech. I got them all there on the Titanium channel. We were just fucking looking yeah, at them. Yeah. yeah, this guy was fucking just pepping yellows when that was happening, bro. Yeah? It's just shit out of nowhere. Yeah, AWAR just popped out of nowhere, and he was like Jared Boosters. As soon as he released videos, he got 80,000 views. No, archaics can't even do that. Can't even do that, man. I can't even release a. I can't even uh, build up uh, uh, interest for three or four days. Say I'm about to release a huge truth bomb. I'm about to do it. I can't even do that. I'll, I'll barely get twenty one thousand views, twenty two thousand views huh. in a five or six day uh, uh, deal. So for a new channel to just suddenly appear and just storm the market, it's being pushed. It's being pushed, and, there's, and the only way that can happen is if the algorithm is favoring that narrative of whatever's being pushed. So this was really highly suspect. AWAR was, was very suspect. And when he was he came along the 11th hour, bro. Yeah, he's 11th hour. I, I get that. But what really suspicious to me was the exact same video that AWAR put out showing the, the, the history of the world and all that that was so famous on YouTube. Autodidactic put it on his channel, and Autodidactic subs... Spiked. Oh, and um, JC. 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 She got like ninety thousand subs for mirroring. JC. Have a look. She had had, right. It's her biggest video because she mirrored there over half a million. Yeah. Seen. If you go to their channels and Check look at up. that video, because they reposted that video, everybody who reposted that video went viral. They went viral, and the channels went through the roof. That tells you something. Who is this guy who just puts this video out? He goes viral. Everybody who puts it on their channel goes viral, and then. To make a to, to to really really add to the weirdness. After all this happens, the same dude comes out and retracts everything. Well, like I already called it before it did because I fucking knew. I told uh, people who know me will know that I already called it before he. I said, oh yeah, he's fucking a plant. And later on, he'll just fucking turn coat, and he did. I fucking knew he yeah. as well. Yeah, Martin uh, Martin called out that he would that he would turn coat. But yeah, so it was a. Uh, it was kind of obvious that AWAR from the beginning was an agent. No, I mean, he's a, uh, he hid behind that, you know, it's just, it's crazy. It's just crazy. The whole, the whole thing is AWAR deal. The very fact that he came out with a full retraction was, was, was ridiculous. It's almost as if it's an attempt to get people just to lose interest, like crying wolf. So many people have cried wolf that, man, you know what, I'm not interested no more. I don't know what to believe. So people quit even entertaining the topics. Yeah, so, that's yeah. true. It's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Oh, I see Shiva Shampoo in here today. Uh, well, Shiva knows a thing or two. He's been with me a long time. Yeah, Ken, yeah. Ken Wheeler is Theora Apophysis. Yeah, that's right. I have no idea what that means. It's Greek. I know it's Greek. Mm. But, no. but uh, yeah, he's. I, I believe, uh, yeah, but Ken is still more to the... To the uh, globe reality. He still, you know, I get that. I get that. I don't know if Ken even entertains the idea that we live in a construct that all of this is simulated. I don't know if he's ever, he, he's ever exper experimented with that type of uh, uh, that type of thinking. I don't know. I don't know enough about Ken Witter to know. I see somebody said talking about Michael Tellinger. Now, okay. is, is Michael Tellinger the Anunnaki guy, no, Africa? the South African guy, uh, the Mbutu guy, the so guy who does the stone circles. Yeah. Okay, he's still, on the, he's still on the Zechariah Sitchin shit then. Yeah. yeah. He's still on. Michael Tellinger would still be on board with... Uh, it's a simulation. And uh, he did go flat earth a few years ago. He does the rounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get that in contact with him, I couldn't. That's crazy. So, uh, Garrett... Garrett Solberg, thoughts on Eric Dubé. I listen. I, I've already plugged this book twice on my channel. I I've already that. showed this book. I said, man, I, I can't get my mind around some of these experiments. It's like, wow, this is this is very impressive. But independent of Dubé, on my channel, I have shown. 
I've got Gleason. I've got Synthetic Astronomy. I've got Eric Dubay's 200, 200 proofs. I've read them all. Carpenter. I don't have Carpenter. Oh, yeah, I've got Carpenter. I don't have Carpenter. But I, but I read from those three books, two of them from the 1890s. I've read enough there to understand that we live on a flat plane, a flat realm. But I'm not a flat earther because I'm a simulationist. I believe we live in a simulated environment. And any computer program, in order to begin the computer program, even, even one of these circuit board cities, you still have to measure out a flat plane to begin building. Everything else is simulated, and I'm referring to curvatures. So, yeah, I'm not worried. It's, to me, it's a non-issue. The perimeters of our world is a non-issue to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe, I believe flat earth is a stepping stone. The bigger truths. And I think I think I probably pissed Eric Dubay off with, with that and a couple other ones, but that's okay. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I like I like the dude. I, I think he I think he's sometimes a little snide, but uh I've dealt with him in the comment section. But you know, other than that, he's alright. I don't I don't have any problem with, with, with Eric Dubay. Yeah. He was snide, it's just because he was growing up. He's a lot older now and he's a lot more he's a lot better. Shiva said, Shiva said the guy I was talking to wasn't actually Eric. I'm open to that too. Um, anyone's just said talking about Russell Branch. Uh, yeah. Oh, that was you. Russell Branch, sorry. <laughs> so, Russell Brand, anyone? He went from lefty hippie to anti lockdown to interviewing RF Kennedy Jr. to four letter word, four letter R word. Mm -hmm. I don't know a four letter R word. He's talking about accusations. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you can say it. He's, he's been accused of rape. Yeah. So, uh, But didn't they do that to Julian Assange? I mean, isn't that the way they always remove the people they want to remove? Yeah. I mean... Yeah. CD, CD sex case. Yeah. Yeah, that's the easiest way to, to, to get them. Yeah. It's the hardest thing in the world to defend against. Once you once you have that accusation against you, yeah. Well, like, the stigma. The all stick, the... Yeah. All the... No, you understand. Mm -hmm. Prosecute the... Every state has passed prosecutorial uh, uh, in, in the revised statutes, in, in the civil procedure for any type of sex crimes. It is way easier to prosecute, and it's very difficult to defend from. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those, that's why they do that. So uh, I don't know what's up with Russell Brand. I don't know if he did it or not. No, I and, don't think so. And, there, the and there's hundreds of channels talking about it, so I don't even want to talk about it. Here. No, no, me. I, it doesn't fit the ammo. I don't think so. Yeah, he ain't never had me on his channel, so I, well, I right, care. This is it. Or any one of us. We'll he let he time. let Graham Hancock talk to him three times about Atlantis. Oh yeah, yeah. And he bumped flat Earth apparently because the Greeks knew, which mm -hmm. they didn't because it was flat cosmology. So that does my head in. Yeah. So somebody was asking about Cliff High. Oh, uh, anyway. Uh, my girlfriend likes to listen to Cliff High. I don't know anything about it. I listened to two or three presentations. I didn't make it through all of them. I was busy doing other things, but. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, we'll find out next month. He's made, he made a big prediction about next month. I don't, but I don't know. Uh, when I listen to him, I'm listening to a man that believes in what he's saying. And that means a lot to me. Because I listen to a lot of people. I can tell they're full of shit. They're all about the dollar signs. Just look below at all the beautiful merchandise that's going by. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, on the first three yeah. minutes of the video, selling yeah. that shit. Hell yeah! Spend spend the first five minutes of their videos reading off their commercials. No, dude, I'm a. Uh, uh, when it comes to Cliff High, I do I, I see something genuine there. I don't know what his belief system is. I haven't I haven't really seen it. But it, rather than asking about individual personalities, uh, I'm gonna tell you here here's my litmus test. If you believe that Atlantis was 9,600 years B.C., there's something wrong with you. If you believe that the Anunnaki narrative of Zechariah Sitchin promoting half a million years of Sumerian history and seven kings that ruled Sumer that could have lived 241,200 years, there's something mentally wrong with you. That's what I believe. I believe the channelers, some of their hearts might be in the right place, but if how many channelers do you know have a collegiate education? How many channelers do you know that that have been in peer-reviewed environments? How many channelers do you know that can pro, that can provide research that has extensive bibliographies to show all the material that that they divulge? You don't. It is the uneducated that become channelers, and they have high octane imaginations, and they promote all this BS. I'm sorry if some of you have fallen prey. For 
to the channelers, but that's adult fantasy. I don't go for it. I'm not going to go for it. I'm just not. Almost every channeler that I've ever listened to gave themselves up in some way when they reveal that they received through channeling something that I know I know absolutely to be untrue. So, mm. yeah, it's there's no way. Ancient aliens? You, oh, fucking give it. I believe in UFOs. I believe in UFOs. I've seen UFOs, but I'm not saying they yeah. come from space. 100%. Yeah. U.S. military believes in UFOs, too. And they divulge to the media that these are potential extraterrestrial threats. But you know what? U.S. military knows otherwise. UFO activity has been documented by seen a week ago by ships going in and out of volcanoes, in and out, in and out of valleys and mountain ranges. No UFOs have been documented going in and out of our atmosphere. That's a problem, wow. but it makes sense to me because another thing I believe in is a very active and inhabited underworld. Same, or, 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 or in the sea. In the sea too. Yeah, yeah, in the sea too. Yeah. But the underworld, there's more real estate in the underworld than there is on the surface. It's crazy. And that's a mathematical fact. A mathematical fact. You can only build so much on a thin surface, but on a thick underworld, going 100 miles down, you could pancake civilizations that would be so far apart from each other, and they could have a million people in each civilization and not even know the other ones exist. Hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of real estate in the underworld. Oh, Galactic Federation, that's another no-no. <laughs> that's another no-no. I'm not trying to hear it. Oh, God. Yeah, man. It's, it's all ridiculous. And again, soul trap. No, it's NDE, guys. Near-death experiment. Exper Near-death experience means they did not die because their soul came back to the avatar. Their soul might have wandered, but it did, they didn't die. That's why it's NDE. So I'm not believing anybody who comes and tells me, don't go toward the light. Because again, that's a frame of reference. Can any of you find me a single reference of the, of, of the soul trap about not going toward the light. Can you find me a book, a movie, anything before Poltergeist? Let me know. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 man. Before yeah. Poltergeist, no one had ever heard that before. Don't go toward the light. Caroline, don't go towards the light. Yeah, yeah. man. Oh, fucking okay. Yeah. I'm true. not trying to hear it. I'm not. Yeah, so, I think yeah, everything in the atmosphere can be explained by electromagnetism. Like, meteor showers yeah. prove that there's no satellites. Because it's all just happening in the atmosphere. Man, the yeah, weird shit we saw in New Mexico. Well, we seen Starlink. He runs in for the camera. And by the time he comes back up, the lights went off. So it's like maybe a couple of miles long. Big fuck off lights in a row. Um, traveling across the sky. It's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things up there now. There's a lot of things oh, being yeah. seen in the sky. Uh, lots of people have seen it, I, and uh, t you know, a couple of years ago, um, I cranked up live when it was happening again, and they disappeared then. Uh, but nothing is orbiting anything because you need a ball for that. So I don't know what they are. You know? Oh, you know what, uh, Greg G. <laughs> I, I recently made oh, yeah. Greg a moderator, I believe, and he's a pilot. And he believes in simulation theory. Oh. oh. Yeah, in case I So forget, he's a pilot. Have you ever seen any curvature? I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Clayton. Yep. Oh, uh, remind me or, or send a message to Greg somehow. To he's right, he's right uh, there. I might want to talk to him, man. I might want to talk. You can talk to him right now. He's on the stage. I don't, don't want to interrupt the flow of this oh, program. Okay. I need to remember because a pilot's oh. perspective and ideas on simulation theory would be very interesting since a pilot learns in a simulator to begin with. Uh -huh. But I'll send you an email. That's very interesting. Indeed. Let's see. Oh. Uh, so here's another one, guys. I'm just going to name him. I don't, I don't give a damn about any blowback whatsoever. But uh, I have absolutely no faith in Stephen Greer at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and name him put him on the table right now. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you about him earlier, but I forgot. Yeah, well, I, 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 believe, I, believe, I, believe, I was thinking of. Oh, I believe he works for an alphabet agency. I believe oh, he's yeah. deliberately out there to put out deliberate misinformation. He's no different and than the crossed. alphabet agency controlled history channel mm -hmm. on YouTube. Okay. It's supposed to be the history channel, but all they talk about is ancient aliens. That's it. I'm not trying to hear. Remember, the whole ancient aliens narrative is to get you to look up. Remember, all get you to look up. Remember, the whole time, the whole time they're they're. Messing with us on the surface 
and the news is getting us to worry about this thing that's spreading all over the surface of the world and that we got to watch each other, watch your community, stay six feet away, wear your mask. Well, they got us distracted with this and, the tr and they gave us a false narrative about why the trucker convoys were really happening and why the migrants were showing up at the borders and then disappearing into military convoys. While all this misinformation was going around, they were doing things in the underworld, getting ready. While all this while all this budget was being used, while the Democrats and Socialists were fleecing America with trillion dollar budgets, as soon as she was done acquiring all the funding they needed to stock all these facilities in the underworld, they let her off. She was done. Nancy Pelosi did her job. She was dismissed. She was done. She literally fleeced America for hundreds of trillions of dollars over a 40-year period. Exactly what her career was about. So, it's a, uh, yeah, man, it's a lot. It's a lot of, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of distraction. And he's just another person trying to get you to look up. It's just like all these movies, Independence Day, the threat is on the outside. The threat is coming from space. Every bit of this is false. This is, listen, you guys know I had Ben Davidson of Suspicious Observers on my channel. And I was very respectful to him. And per, from personality to personality, I like the guy. And I believe he's, I believe he's intelligent. But I also, I also believe that he is promoting the same fear about a threat coming from the sky. It's all BS. The only thing we have to worry about is what's hiding in the underworld and the technology they use in the underworld to affect the surface that allows them to blame, blame aerial phenomena. Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really on board with the fact that we've had a technologically advanced civilization underneath us from the beginning. The book of Genesis starts that way. Remember, I've had videos recently showing you the whole Adam and Eve story. When they were banished from Eden, Eden was an underground facility. Yeah. When they were banished to Eden, they were told they were had to go out into the into the land of Nod, the surface, and they had to scratch out the ground for a living, and they had to fear the others. Yeah, they were banished from the underworld where everything was available and sent up to the surface where now the sun became a problem. Nighttime became a problem. They had to deal with, deal with weeds, plant crops, deal with large, dangerous animals. They had to build walled cities, and they had to deal with the others. The descendants of survivors of past cataclysms that were still on the surface. That's how the Adam and Eve story started. Mm. Let's see. That's the story. Man, there was something else I wanted you to talk about, man. What the hell was it all? I can't remember now. Thanks so much. Yeah, the Jared Booster's deal, that's, that's a real red flag for me. Yeah. You come out of nowhere and you got 800,000 yeah, views. A, that doesn't a, even make any sense. There's man. like, um, they speak this subject in like Mexico, places like that, in Spanish speaking world. So there's one that is got like going on 100,000 subs and he is like literally, I caught him fucking repeating my video of the weekend. Yeah. And he literally, the moment I went in his chat, he closed the fucking show down. So yeah, I'm not surprised. Open minded in Spanish. Oh my god. I, I asked him on server because he kept coming up in my feeds and he was just agonizing. Who is this? Some Spanish speaking uh, Tatarian channel. They're, they're in all sorts of nationalities now. They're really, really big. The Facebook group, groups are massive uh, yeah, yeah. for this subject now, much bigger than on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's massive. And TikTok's like. It's like Smashing it on the antiquity subject, or you get these like really well to do uh, kids speaking about antiquity and getting like a couple of million views on it. You know, talking about the bells, you know, or or the dirigibles or whatever, right. you know. So, Neil of the Nine, yeah, says Jason Ken, Ken Wheeler is a uh, he goes with the apophatic method which is to remove what is untrue to arrive at the truth. Okay, well, I didn't know that that was a thing. But on my channel, that's what I do. I take paradigms and I dissect them and I show you this is untrue. And these are all the reasons why. And I provide my data sets and my videos. So apparently, Ken Winter and I are doing the exact same thing. Yeah, I, I just have that. different interests. I have my interests are all these bullshit adult fantasy paradigms, which are untrue. And I've, I've come to know they're all untrue because I am a chronologist. Mm -hmm. And the study of chronology opens up many, many gates. 
of cognition. It takes you in many, many different directions in, in your in your journey to you know ascertain fact from fiction. Chronology is the most ignored of all of all the uh, methods of history. Chronology is the most ignored. But yeah, that's that's what I like. So I, I'm glad to know that. I didn't know that about about Ken Wheeler. That's interesting. Hey, Wendy Flores. Oh, she just turned beet red. Every time I make, every time I give her a shout out, Aww. she's behind her computer turned beet red. She's the one that won our arcade scholarship oh. uh, on our first meetup. Oh yeah, and she got a free trip. Yeah. Huh. Oh, then, oh, that's awesome. And then in a restaurant, I saw a star, and I, I put my arm around her. She turned like apple red. Oh, yeah. That's Wendy Flores. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bill Cosby. Come on, Jamie Robbins. What you mention him for? Yeah, Eric Tobey has talked about simulation theory. He's yeah. up on the holiday. Yeah, theory. he's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, um, he's married to Katy Perry, Russell Brand, and she's related to the Rothschild. She's married Russell to Brand is married to Katy Perry? No, he was married to Katy Perry. She's oh. Rothschild. Oh, I see. You remember that I deal with Katy Perry? Yeah, The little, yeah. little, yeah. Sim- yeah, yeah, the little robot eye? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think that was symbolism. I think uh, they were doing yeah, a ritual. I might do the old one eye. She was doing a ritual. Okay. She um basically she she um was cranked up on YouTube and laying in a bed and she just looked like an ordinary girl. And then uh, my friend Dan, he went into the chat feed and told her the earth was flat and she's like, Oh, yes, flat and then basically like a couple of seconds later the feed goes off. The next morning they reported that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson had been Brought into Katy Perry to explain to her how the earth was a curve. What? I know shit. Okay, and well, that's a good. That. Well, that's a good. That's a good. Neil deGrasse Tyson, total shit. Yeah, there, Dan, W, in there. He, hey, when uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson dies, he's going to get a star in Hollywood, just like the astronauts who are actors got stars yeah, exactly. in Hollywood. Yeah, believe that, guys. He might not get a gold star yep. being a shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, Neil deGrasse. Guess who else is going to get a star? Bill Nye the Science Guy. Well, he's I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that guy, too. Yep. Yeah. And What's then- up, beautiful? What are you packing? Mm-hmm. Would you like to say hi to the community? You going to turn beat, beat red on me? <laughs> Hello. That's my girl. Hello. She won't come over here. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Uh, yeah, man, we still got well, we got more ground to cover, guys. So, I can't read that. Oh, I your glasses on. Also, you know what? We're going to ask you guys yeah, your, your nice. opinion about something. Yeah. Um, we're going to ask you guys your opinion about something in the community, and when this gets posted on YouTube, I want your well, I want your opinion about this as well. Oh, uh, I'm asking the opinion because I've received emails about a group on YouTube. It may be untrue. But I've received uh, I've received a couple of them now. It's the second one that got my attention. So I'm not going to say what these emails said, but it, it's a. Uh, uh, I have been vehemently attacked by by several smaller channels, and I don't know where they're getting their funding from because they're not monetized, and yet they spend a tremendous amount of time video clipping, video editing, and all that other stuff. And then I find that these emails are very specific. About who they're who they're absolutely connected to. I want to know what you guys think of the channel called Mind Unveiled. I don't know anything about them. I don't, I've had a I've, I've mentioned them a couple times because there was something in one of their videos I totally disagreed with on Cabbage Patch Kids or something. And uh, was that it? Was that it? Was that Mind Unveiled? Yeah, it was the postcards they posted. Yeah, it was Mind Unveiled. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not true. Like yeah. you all might be born out of cabbages. Well, no, it's no, just it's just you guys know I collect a lot of these old magazines. I have stacks of old magazines from the 1920s. Uh, t- matter of fact. This is a whole stack from 1893 to 1897 of Farmer's Almanacs right here. I spent all morning taking pictures out of these. It's a whole stack right here under this big old giant book. And uh, uh, something interesting that happened was, I'm going to get this for y'all real quick. I'm on their Discord. I've actually talked to the guy you know what, twice. You know what? But I'm probably not going to be able to find it. Yeah, yeah y'all found it. Yeah, you talk to him. Well, what, what, what's, what's the score then? He says he's talked to I, him. He knows him. I'm trying to remember. It was he actually was uh, 
Oh, I think he was trying to find information about something like uh, they they make really long form videos, and um, yeah, I've always felt they were you know pretty decent. I mean, I haven't like vetted every source that they come out with and stuff, but you know, of course, I don't think everything's all BS. But um, I think I, I know it's him. I think and his wife or something like that. So it's a couple. Um, I, I don't know. It, I, I've seen a lot of their stuff, and there's a video they did recently, a couple of them about places here in, like, Florida. I think one was Pensacola. I think some was somewhere else, but they were going through showing, like, uh, kind of old-world tech and stuff. Um, and I'm so but, glad you mentioned Florida. Florida. I'm so glad you mentioned Florida. Yeah. I forgot about that. I, oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about that guy. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, we're just asking about Mind Unveiled and, and uh, are, are, they, are they clean? Has that channel been basically free of any controversy or any BS? I'm, I'm, genuinely, I'm genuinely curious about this. Uh, we have no as, far as I know. As far as I know, I, I mean, I've, I've, I still watch some of their videos and stuff. I mean, I haven't really, you know, m most channels, of course, have their own detractors, but as far as the crazy people we've been talking about here no i haven't seen any of that personally it seems like they cool. seem to be pretty okay at least at least a chance of talking to them i'll actually message this guy for you i'm on his discord i don't, I don't need you i don't need you, to you want. For me. I'm, okay. just, I'm just i'm asking because uh, i I'm, I'm of the opinion that most of the people in martin's community and in my own community are of over average intelligence and, and they have a you guys have a way you're more in tune with the community than we are yeah we are content creators yeah. really, we don't really have the time to absorb what's going on you guys have a lot more time to see what's what's really happening out there so i get i get uh, emails from people telling me hey man you really need to check out mind unveiled you got some crossover there's a lot of difference here but i think there would be some value if you looked into them and then i get other emails talking about you need to watch out mind unveiled behind the scenes is doing this and this and they're connected to this truth or here's your, who's just attacking you vehemently so i get i get mixed emails but i understand as well that when when these operatives, whether they're attached to, to communities or if they're, they're attached to big channels and they're paid, these operatives, this is what they do. They mass produce emails trying to sow discord and get channels to attack each other. This is what they want to do. I'm not going to engage in that. I'm not going to fall prey to that. So my personal opinion, and anybody else can come up here and speak, of course, I don't think they're operatives. I'm not saying they're correct on everything they come out with, but as well, far as I've seen so far, they feel clean to me. So, well, yeah, can, can they, uh, they're, they're very, um, they're very solid on their scholarship. It seems like, or, or they, they don't do logical fallacies. So like when they engage with detractors and stuff, they, they're very civil and they, they usually try to keep it just straight to the points. Yeah. They they just did that ten hour uh, homunculus video, which was yeah. nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see yeah. the issue the issue with with Mind Unveiled in the past with them wasn't personal. It was that uh, they had the video about the Cabbage Patch Kids. But I'm well aware because I collect all these old magazines that that in America and in the UK Christian puritism was so strong that you could not openly talk about sexual issues in these magazines so housewives and daughters females in, in general used to love cutting pictures of babies out and putting them in references to sexual situations like being born they put them in cabbages this is this was this was ancient photoshop from a hundred years ago this is what they did they took scissors they cut pretty babies out and they put them in in fields showing them being born it's no different than the stork, stork delivering a baby mm -hmm. this was a euphemism because when you couldn't openly talk about sex in christian in in, in uh, american puritan uh times because in the 1910s 1920s and 1930s you weren't allowed to talk about these things in, in, in publications. It was it was anathema. So they may not know that. I, yeah. So all I did was mention that yeah, man, it's, the babies weren't born in real cabbages, and they didn't have incubators in the middle of fields that were disguised as cabbage cabbages, and, and have these babies popping out. That's not what it was. This was a type of art. It was a, it was expressive from a Christian Puritan perspective of of the act of giving birth. 
So yeah, man, it's it's uh so yeah, I, I kinda I probably got on their bad side with that and I didn't mean to mm-hmm. at all, but but uh that's just what happened. Yeah, I, I don't think they, like uh, Risenthal said, I don't think they were uh, saying they were. If you actually watch, um, well, from what I remember from the video, it was more like they were just asking the question. They were found these, and they could have found them just like you said. They were just beautifully done, and they looked like they're just postcards or whatever. So they're just like, okay, what is this? They, I mean, they weren't even sure what it was even staying, basically. They were just pretty much showing people the cards and stuff that they found. And who knows? Somebody could have planted it to them and stuff like that, but... And they may not yeah. have that thought about with the way you just explained it too. I can actually see that, and know somebody's that they asking, cut it up and clipped it. So. Somebody's asking if Russell J. Gold is legit. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to re-ask that question because they call him the postman, and that he has literally hijacked legally the entire postal system. I'm going to tell you now, I go to the post office every week and I see people lined up to get their passports. I see people in there doing all their all their uh, uh, postal business and all that. And if Russell J. Gold has done all this stuff that is claimed that he has done, the question is not, is Russell J. Gold legit? Is Russell J. Gold relevant? I don't see any change in my life from anything that he's miraculously done. Just like that lady who claims that she's that she's in control of all the finances of the entire world. What's her name? I mean, I you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's it. Who? What's her name? Uh, oh God! What is the what is the woman's name that claims she, that she, she's she, in control of all the yeah? I'm discussing that. The Federal Reserve and all this. Yeah, I never. Can you remember? Yeah. Okay. I remember no. her name? Janet Yellen. Yeah, well, yeah, you go. No, not Janet Yellen. No, not Janet Yellen. No, there is a lady that claims that she is basically high, con- she's in control somehow of this entire world's economy. Kim all Guggen. Kim Gogan. Kim Gogan. Kim Gogan. Kim Gogan. How do you say it? Gogan. Gogan. All right. Same letters in the Gigi. Yeah. So, listen, it's listen, guys. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not with it. Kim Gogan. If she's in control of all that, then she needs to fund archaics. We want to do international symposiums in every country in the world. If you have that much power and you have that much money, please contact my agent. Her, her name is Dawn Hart. Yeah, yeah I'm not feeling. No, she sent one out to New Mexico. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. She did send a representative out to New Mexico. I met him. I met him. He had a black. He was all dressed in black. Had a black hat. Yeah. Came walked up to me in a restaurant and gave me the whole spiel. Yeah, yeah sure did. He sure did. Yeah. Peggy Bender, how you doing? One of my newest, one of my newest uh, mods. Mods. Next time I do a live, Peggy, you'll see your wrench. Congratulations, That's Peggy. Good. That's awesome. So, okay, that you know what? I have to, I have to mention this before we go to this Florida dude mm-hmm. about. Uh, Peggy Bender is was a moderator on Square Pegs oh, yeah. channel. Listen, guys, I told you basically what had happened with Soul Lugman. A lot of people weren't feeling Soul Lugman. I kept doing videos with him. I kept people were steady sending, sending me emails. They've talked to Don. They've talked to other members of my community, and they said, "Man, we're just not really resonating with this guy." Uh, he's like, it's like, it's like we're just not, we're just not feeling that he has the same spirit, and he's like, he's just saying what he needs to say in order to to send a bunch of people to his Substack. So he's blowing up all. We have archaics pages on multiple different platforms. Facebook has five or six, and, and, and he's power posting, and all of them trying to send people to Substack. And you know what? I'm all, I'm, I'm cool with a, a, an amount of self promotion, but you know what? It got bad with the Aaron Fest deal because because with the Aaron Fest deal he almost got me in a legally binding contract with with a event coordinator in Mexico which could have been a problem for me it could have, I could have ended up getting sued if anything happened I'm an ex felon I don't know how easy it is for me to get a passport and a visa to go to Mexico to, to do this deal all kinds of things could have come come up wrong and I could have got sued but the Aaron Fest deal was online. And he had put together a deal where all these content creators attached to Archaics were going to now charge for their material, which is already free on YouTube. Now they're going to charge for it for three days. And he had, and he had a, and I just got, I got upset with him and told him, man, I said, man, hey, I'm not trying to do business with this woman that sent me this contract. 
this is a speaker's contract. Man, I'm not cool with that at all. And then we find out he had a, he had merchandise, Errant Fest merchandise for sale. And you know what? I, don't, you know, I, I didn't even have merchandise at the time. Hell, since then, I went ahead and got wired up to go ahead and do a t-shirt and, and hoodies deal, but I don't even promote it. You don't see any videos that show that show merchandise on the bottom yeah, of my channel. I do channel. exactly the same, but yeah, I don't yeah. ever promote it. Yeah, I don't ever. I, you don't see me promote this stuff. If you want a t-shirt, buy a t-shirt. I'm not gonna try to try to ask you to do one, do it. But it just it got out of hand, so I just basically just broke all ties with Soul Lugman, which wasn't the end. I thought that would have been the end. But then he went on a campaign, man, about cults and all that, with every inference in the world across YouTube that anybody associated archaics is a cultist. So that kind of got out of hand, had to call him out on that. So while all this is going on, while all this is going on, guys, I have this, I have this, uh, you guys don't know the whole story because I haven't told, told it to you. Martin was there. Don was there. Cheryl was there. The owner, the owner of a restaurant. Oh, I keep forgetting the name of the restaurant. Oh, Texas, wow. Texas Longhorn, Longhorn Steakhouse, Steakhouse was there yeah. when I was paid four thousand dollars to take these two people's faces off of a deal. But I haven't even told you guys the whole story because I'm not a shit starter. I don't want to start shit. But the whole folder that they were showing us at the restaurant was J Dreamers, and I don't even want to go into all the details. But many people wow. ask me. What is your problem with J Dreamers? Many people have asked me what's going on, and I try to say, "Hey, man, listen, man, I got the screenshots from a from a a post J Dreamers did against the errants, against the errant communities. He didn't just attack me; he attacked the whole community. But the blowback from his own chat section was so bad that within 30 minutes, he took his own post all off. But not after many people screenshot it and sent it to me." So most people didn't know about it because I'm not a shit starter. I'm not gonna sit here. I just I just politely decided I'm not gonna have any more dealings with J Dreamers. That's all I was gonna do. And then on my own channel, Archaics TV, behind a, a five dollar paywall, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna tell you guys a story basically what's going on. But I don't want to tell you all the details about the dossier, about all this whole folder that these these are the two people. You guys know who they are. They're the two people that showed up on my channel in black hats, black in black vests, and black uh, backpacks. And then my dogs and my security cameras picked them up. And these are the two people that showed up in public at the restaurant and paid me four grand in front of all these witnesses to take their faces off of YouTube. And I respected that. When they paid me, I pulled my phone out right in front of Martin and, and Dawn. I went in there and I took them off of YouTube. I, I, I took the post down. I still have those pictures for safety for the future, yeah. but I still have them. But I never, because I'm not a shit starter, I never told y'all the whole story. It's not relevant. All I did was just disassociate from J Dreamers. But they had a dossier on there with, 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 with all kinds of shit. Listen, man, this shit goes back. It goes back far, guys, before I ever appeared on YouTube. You gotta understand. I don't, I don't agree with J Dreamers. I don't have anything personal against him. He attacked me. I didn't attack him. So, he, so I just left it alone. But you know what? The call-in show that he claims that he has nothing to do with, and it was it's not true. He sat there and let them dudes get it all out instead of just hanging up on him going to the next caller. It was it was totally about attacking me. He was in on it from the beginning. That's why the end of that video by that dude said this presentation was by Jason Brashears. I never did that video, and Jay Dreamers knew that. Knew that. So listen, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even discussing that. There's no more. There's no more future between me and that dude at all. So this is the type of stuff that happens in the truther community. Other other agents and people start start you know doing all kinds of crazy shit. My disagreement with with J Dreamers is not personal. It is it is by by subject matter. Martin and I have been going over some research. Remember that book I showed you from the eighteen, the the, the researcher in the eighteen nineties who went to the North Pole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, we have awesome book, man, amazing book. Dude goes to the North Pole, eighteen ninety five, publishes what he sees. He comes across fox trails. Then the, then, the, then he wakes up one morning, warm air. Yeah, warm. Well. He gets to an area where there's no more snow. Now it's all green. He keeps going forward. He's looking at the horizon, and the top of and the horizon now seems to be dipping in slightly. He starts panicking. He starts panicking. 
But the Eskimos that are with him will not go further, but they claim that's their origin. And, and they also claim that in their oldest stories, they're not allowed to go home yet. The North Pole is supposed to be the origin of the Eskimos. They didn't come over the Bering Strait. No. The Eskimo Inuits claim to this dude in 1895 that their origin was the North Pole. And he, and he just laughed it off. Pointed north. And when he went to the North Pole, he found vegetation, mammalian life forms like foxes. He found an area with no ice that opened up to a warm air coming out of a giant hole at the North Pole. Now, we already know... We already know from other studies that the U.S. military has found that the North Pole isn't anything like we've been taught. We know the Russians found things at the North Pole. It's nothing that we've been found. We already know about the island of Spitsbergen. Is that it? The island of Spitsbergen. Underneath the ice in the permafrost are apple trees and giant three-toed sloth that were frozen solid. So at one time, even that ice cap wasn't there. The permafrost wasn't there. So we have... My, my issue is this, in the plasma apocalypse model of J-Dreamers, which isn't even his, it comes from Brian Lambert, and was it, was it Tiny Slippers, whatever? What's your name? Oh, me, me his new pair of glasses. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, they were the first ones to bring that to YouTube. When they brought that to YouTube. When they brought that to YouTube, Even there was a lot of people watching them, and they had this plasma apocalypse deal. It was really interesting, but this was before Jay Dreamers came on the scene. When he came on the scene, when he came on the scene, they had disappeared. No, no, gone. not on, only on the scene with that narrative, because he'd been in the flat earth since they, I've been. They, 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 they actually, started the flat earth, flat earth movement. No, he was they, saying to me. Yeah. Mia actually made a video calling out kind of like what we're doing right now, and she actually oh, wow. specifically had a lot about J Dreamers on there. From what I found out, um, they're both dead now. Like something she oh, did, okay. and then he couldn't handle it. So I'm sure y'all minds can understand. I don't, I don't know. know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to entertain that. I don't know if they're dead. I don't know if they're dead. I don't know if they're alive. I know they brought this stuff to the table back then. They're gone. J Dreamers is still here. J Dreamers now promotes plasma apocalypse. But I don't know if they promoted what he's promoting. That you guys will have to educate me. I don't know because I'm not watching him anymore. But no. in his in his plasma apocalypse narrative. He's promoting that the North Pole is the ancient Mount Meru, and I disagree. It is the ancient uh, plasma volcano that destroys the world. When the plasma apocalypse occurs, all the destruction happens at the North Pole and then destroys the rest of the world. This is the model that he described to me. But I have a problem with that because the model of what we're finding the North Pole to be isn't an area where destructions come from. It's an area that appears to be like a Garden of Eden hidden behind an ice continent. Now, what's also unusual is that, you know what, I don't, matter of fact, what a coincidence, it was with Martin sitting at this table that I did a video, 1871 Cyclical Flood yep. Theory, yep. where this yep. dude shows that ice ages are bullshit and all this grand destructive evidence found all around the world comes from the South Pole and goes upward to the destruction and then stops around the equatorial plane. Yes. Yeah. So it's very... Okay. So it's very, very... It, it's the opposite uh, of the plasma apocalypse model. Now, this isn't this isn't to say Jay, Jay Dreamers has not brought value to the table. The man's got an awesome videos. He's got an awesome channel. Yeah. He's got all kinds of things like that. Yeah. But but when it comes to he and I personally, no guys, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you know in the past. I'm not I'm not going backwards at all. I'm moving forward, guys. So there's no more. But but there's been another victim in this in this uh, conflict. Started with Soul Love Men, then Jay Dreamers, but. While this was going on with Jay Dreamers, somebody fell victim to all this he said, she said, said shit, and now she has, has gone off and said some really poisonous, toxic comments about me in reference to Jay Dreamers and calling me a potential gatekeeper and that, uh, yeah, just really toxic. So I have now separated archaics from square peg divergent. 
because she has done this, mm -hmm. and I have all the screenshots for that. So this is it's toxic environment. I'm not getting into it. I'm not. I'm not even going to engage. Oh that other channels can say whatever they want to say. I'm going to keep moving forward and dissecting the truth where I see it. But yeah, when this behavior surfaces, it's over. I move forward. They can continue with their squabbles. I don't care. I don't even care. Well, then I, uh, I became a catastrophist real quick. That's how I actually became a catastrophist and really uh, started me off on this was those two people that you just talked about. And I was here watching them before J-Dreamers ever came on the scene. That's how I was like, I knew that he'd went on their website because they had started it around then too. And, and they made a video about him. And they were basically like, hey, watch out for this dude basically because he's taking off what well, we've – they People never think. actually, they never said plasma apocalypse. It was never, uh, you know, all these beings come out of the sky. I mean, there's some, you know, some interesting, crazy stuff that he's talked about, but they never talked really anything like that. They were pretty practical. She had a really good series about the controllers of the world, and she made really good sense seeing how all it was like a play and act and how, it, you know, so they did a really good job on all that. But I was here when that, when he, when he came around, so I, I pretty much knew mm -hmm. back then. Yeah, she cracked up a video as missus, accusing me of plagiarizing um, their pictures, um, a picture of St. Peter's Square. Um, and you could see the little blue thing in the corner when my flat of British fucking bomb banding or branding it was in. Yep. Yeah, they still had the nerve. I couldn't even believe it. And uh, she had like fucking 80,000 views or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah, there's no way to put tags in your videos. Uh, use trigger words, make the right thumbnail, all that bullshit does not exist. Nah. If, if somebody releases a video and they get, and they only have, they only have 20,000 subs, but they get 200,000 views on a video, come on, use your right hit. Yeah, if, they're pushing a narrative that the establishment wants to promote. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. 100%. That's the game. It's crazy. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> Thanks, fuck. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I, I think you were going to ask, ask something earlier. Were you going to talk about that old world guy from Florida? Oh, old okay. world Florida guy. What's his name? Dr. 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 Longo something. Dr. Yeah, Narco Longo. Longo. Yeah. 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 Longo. <laughs> yeah, listen, I don't know what to buy. I've Funny. never watched a single video of his. All I watched was a little three-minute clip somebody had, had, uh, had sniped and sent to me where he was talking about me and all that. I said, listen, it's uh, this, this is another guy. Yeah, this this is another guy, man. That he's on my watch list. I might I might spend a weekend just going through his videos because I have a special I have a special need that that wells up within me to to really critique those who who hold themselves in high esteem in the academic community. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not giving nobody a pass. I don't give a damn about a doctor. I said if somebody if somebody is gonna put doctor, doctor in front of their name, well, they better be physics. able to defend it. <laughs> They better yeah, that's be able to fake that too, though. I think I don't think he's a real doctor. He's just a he's a hippie. Yeah. Like Professor Dave's not real. That's even professor. worse. Yeah, Professor Dave. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that dude, man. What? what? Yeah. That's oh my crazy. God. Me yeah. insane, man. You can just tell some man. people are just straight trolls because there's no way you can believe some of that shit and still spit yeah, it out your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know him, yeah? So, man, Dan, he's like, he's um, the troll for Flat Earth and he gets, like, pushed and gets, like, a million views. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. he, he puts a video up. Like, basically, he pulls a really good video that I made where I expose, like, America as being the old world and not the new fucking world, which I proposed years ago. So I've done a really good video. He brought that up, made a video about it, um, and he's like, he's literally um, citing Josiah Priest's book of 1834, like oh, he's read it, yeah. and like, you ain't read that dude, you don't yeah. know shit about it. Um, anyway, so he made a video, and it's like, he had like, you know, like half a million views in about three days with it. It's just like, what? Just talking about my video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk show. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and that uh, Professor Dave has literally admitted, right, that he gets a script. Yeah, because one, one of the truthers grabbed a screenshot of when he actually admits it. Anything outside of that script, he goes to shit because he hasn't actually got a brain. So, like... That dude came out of nowhere, too, just like a, a lot of others. Yeah. Uh, two. Uh, two nice likes me. Guy. Two likes me. Yeah, he won't debate me uh, at all. But he does like me. I've heard him say that. I quite like that. But uh, he 
your tax to tire, your tax everything, go to Nassi's thing. Why do they go out of their way to spend their life um, attacking truth for channels when we're on a, like an operation to get like peace and love and, and understanding out there in the world? It's crazy. And they're like fucking like a big black cloud over it all. Oh, yeah, what? It's crazy. Yeah, they can fuck off. <laughs> yeah, it's That's crazy. just me. That's just me. If any of you guys. You might be able to save me some time. If any of you guys can happen upon the contact information of that professor of history that was just on Next Level Soul podcast two days ago talking about Atlantis, I need that because I'm, I'm about to publicly call him out. Now, yeah. He's not, yeah. <laughs> screw, screw all that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not lit. I'm not giving history professors a pass. There's no way. So yeah, we're not putting any bad energy out. They were just house cleaning, and we're bringing your attention to what goes on in YouTube. In case you didn't know, and um, look into things yourself, and uh, tell us word us up because um, we're like on the inside. We don't see existentially what's going on, guys. You know, you guys do. When you're watching it all. So um, let us know. Yeah. What do you think? And the truth, like a Scott Free. And the truth. <laughs> That's good me. Oh, I love that. That's all fun. Man, yes, that, yes. Last man. night, Martin and I and the girls, we watched uh, oh, trains, 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 and automobiles. Man, I love John Candy. Man, <laughs> love that movie. I was one fucked up trip. <laughs> you set the candle light. <laughs> Candy. That was brilliant. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, MK Ultra. No, it's not going on RKX TV. It's going to go on YouTube. This video will be on YouTube. Yeah, that's going to uh, kick up a, a stink. Oh yeah, man. It's, hey, you know what? Uh, no one, no one's, no one's got to see that side of me. I've been on YouTube three years. Yeah. I got five hundred and fifty something videos. I got RKX TV now, and I still have not been able. I man, let me tell you something. I am best under pressure. I am best when I'm backed up against the wall. I'm just waiting for one of these clowns, man, to get out of line because I'm ready to unleash. Yeah. Listen, man, I, I, listen, I'm ready to dump data listen, brother, to I've the been extent avoiding it. that it will stupefy someone. I've been avoiding it like everybody else in the truth of community has been avoiding it. You know, I've called out one channel in eight years, and that was Antonio Subarax, and he's dead now, you know? And that was because he was like... Oh, oh, man, why did you, Julie, why did you mention Hancock? I, I was trying to go the whole oh, video. No. <laughs> man, I was trying to go the whole video without mentioning that chill. Yeah. Uh, for time. Thank you. For man, Graham me. Hancock. Listen, Graham Hancock, Andy Collins, Robert Shock. Oh, what's the other Robert? Robert Temple. Um, there's so many of them that all borrowed into that Zodiac. Oh, yeah. Dating. Look, listen. Archaeoastronomy. Remember I said this, guys. This is important. It's not just dating ancient monuments by, an, by a zodiac that doesn't exist. My video the other day that's pretty popular right now about the zodiac not being old is not an attack on astrology. People have been unable to separate the fact that astrology is far more ancient than the artificial model called the zodiac that was only introduced by the Romans. Now, here's the deal. Archaeoastronomy is what is used to date all these monuments in academia and used by Hancock, Randall Carlson, all these people, and none of them have taken into consideration that a, an event in 713 BC changed our calendar from 360 days to 365.25 days. That single event is what made the shadow on the sundial of Ahaz go in 10 degrees in retrograde. Remember, the shadow of the sun in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, stopped moving and then went backward 10 degrees. When that happened, 5.25 days were added to our calendar. This completely distorts every single archaeoastronomy projection mathematically. It is impossible to go with all the dates that have been published in all the books by these men. Because that event was not taken into consideration. That's how I decoded the Mayan long count. If you totally ignore this date, which has so many data sets attached to it, no one can argue after seeing all the data that we had a 360-day year. That's one data set. Another data set is that the year changed in the year 713 BC precisely. That's a whole different data set. A third data set is all the civilizations of the world that changed their year to 365 within two years after that date. So, 
Archaeoastronomy is bullshit. Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson, all of them, dude. If you got their emails, just tell them, man. I'm calling them out. I don't even care. We can talk about anything. Yeah. We, we can talk about anything, not just Atlantis yeah, or anything. They're, they're cloning. They're, no, Jason, like myself, right? we made it that we can't be cloned. Okay, they cannot repeat this. <laughs> They can't clone me. I'm too it's ridiculous. Yeah, they can't clone me either. That's ridiculous. They wouldn't be able to pull it off. Listen, they can they can clone they can clone people uh, that you gotta understand, podcasters, it's really hard to clone a podcaster okay. because the dynamics of our personality is so skewed and so weird. There's no way that anybody else could come in and mimic all that. I have personality and vocabulary nuances that you guys would pick up instantly if it wasn't really me. You know, I can't say the word Gobeki Tepe to save my life. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Tepe. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But I know more about it than Graham Hancock does. <laughs> no, that's true. Crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh, oh, we're not done with this list. Oh, we're done with that. We're done with that shill in Florida. Uh, yeah, man. If you guys, if you guys. If you guys could ever just get, do me a favor, if you're subscribed to that dude, Old World Florida, just go and subscribe to him. Just show him what you really feel. Yeah, man. Yeah. We should hold some unsubscribe parties and just start singling out some of these shields on, on YouTube. You're down, shoot. Let's party. <laughs> Let's play a game. Let's play the game. That's what I talk yeah. about. Always play yeah, the I, game. I appreciate that email to that history professor if anybody can get it. Another one's Billy Carson. I got my eye on Billy Carson for a totally different reason now, guys. I've already I've already ranted about Billy Carson and that Anunnaki BS and and you listen, man. I'm not trying. You you guys know I'm not trying to hear that half a million. It's all easy. The shar is easy to do. It's a turning of the stars. I don't need to say it no more. You guys know. But man, I gotta watch Billy Carson because I've been watching the videos he puts out. So, uh. I'm, not, I'm going to leave it at that right now. He's on my watch list right now. Because I got, I, Martin and I have a list of channels yeah, that are real a, big. Um, anonymous official. He's got half a uh, million subs. Uh, uh, no, two million. And he's yeah. copying your videos. Well, I don't know if he is but yet. It's exactly the same one. I don't so want to accuse might, anybody no, yet. No, no, I'm just saying. It might, I do, it I do want to let you all know we have a watch list. We got a oh, list. Yeah. It's growing daily. We got a list of these real big channels. We don't Listen, man, I'm all about sharing data. I've told people to free to use my data. Yeah, it's only but I'm bad. also real big on giving credit where it's due. That's why I'm, I was mad. I was indignant when I heard Martin's story. When I found out, damn, dude, you were back in 2014 and 15 releasing all this data, and now all these other channels got this, but they've never given him credit. Same images, borrowed, copied, and pasted from Martin stuff, all this stuff. It's uh, often showed, and this is the dead giveaway. It's when images are shown verbatim the way that Martin had them. In the same order, it's a dead giveaway. Mm. So, yeah, man, it's just, anyway, it's all. Uh, we got our eyes on some of these bigger channels that see that they like to lift material from lower, smaller channels. Mm. And that's okay. Mm. But it ain't okay. You get caught doing this multiple times, and we can show it. And you haven't given credit where it's due. Uh -huh. Yeah, don't pretend like you're not watching archaics and then parrot the material on a channel and get five hundred thousand views. Yeah, we're gonna call you out. Yeah, gonna call you There's out. There's some awesome smaller channels that are just like smashing it, and they just don't get promoted at all. Yeah, I say a few of them. Yeah, if you got Billy Co uh, Billy Carson's contact information, you can tell him. Oh, I got my eyes on him. Because, uh, yeah, he wants to debate that Anunnaki stuff. I promise you guys, I will embarrass him publicly. There is no way he can get around the amount of data that I have on the Anunnaki calendars, count timekeeping systems, on how you factor the Shar, who knows about the Shar, and all the academic research out there that completely collapse, collapses that half a million years Zechariah Sitchin bullcrap. Yeah, somebody's got his contacts there, he's going to send it to you. Yeah. So that'd be cool. Hmm. Oh, Shiva Shampoo said, not for YouTube. No. What's he talking about? He ain't talking sure. about this video. No. Let us know. Let us he, he must be talking about something else. <laughs> Shiva, you got our attention. Let us know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, oh, that picture. He just posted a picture. Oh, not much. Big Lino. Who's Big Lino? I'm not clear. Never heard of him. I don't actually watch many YouTube videos. <laughs> I haven't got time. We're making content if I did that. Mm. 
So who else we got on this list? We caught that was Billy Carson right See there. The tank. Yeah, man. Billy Carson come out with a with a video recently about the time before the moon. Yeah. I can't accuse him of taking that of watching archaics. Even though I just released one recently about Hans Hans Bellamy and Hans Bohr. I can't accuse him of that because there were people years ago on YouTube who also cited uh Velikovsky when he mentioned there was a time before the moon. I'm not claiming I'm not claiming to have like I told you guys, most of the archaics material, except for the Phoenix phenomenon data, I'm not claiming to bring new things. I didn't bring simulation theory yeah. to the table. I didn't bring it to the table. I just brought a whole new method of of, of analyzing simulation theory. So it's no, it's uh I am bringing it to the table. Mm. I've signed, I've given credit to all the authors before me. Let's see. I already covered Steve, Stephen Greer in his in his aliens. Oh, all that all that group. Okay, I gotta talk we gotta, Dawkins we gotta, and Lawrence Krauss, all that but agonizing. We gotta to talk me. about the good and bad yeah. of Roger Mud Fossil. Oh, Mud Fossil <laughs> University, huh? Yeah, we gotta talk about the good and bad. So yeah. So you guys know Roger struggled to get his material out there. Roger's a good, good dude. Roger, we, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement that he's a unique researcher. I'm in agreement that a lot of his material is very profound. I'm in agreement that there's crossover between archaics and and Roger Mud Fossil in that vapor canopy environments can create the life forms that Ro Roger has detected in the ground. You understand? There's crossover here. I get all that. Can you tell him? Uh, can you give him the bad news about Roger recently? What he's done? What he's promoting on his channel? Uh, have you seen it? You may not. May you may not have seen uh, it. I don't. I don't watch Roger. Okay. You know he, he's. Um, you know, I'm just from my perspective. Like I don't. I'm not saying. You know, I don't offend anyone by saying the word globe tank. <laughs> but yeah, he's a real big. He's into the globe thing and all of that. So I never watch him. But. Um, I, I got when I did in the beginning. I got a liking to him. Yeah, he grew on me, and I got kind of like. Well, him. What, I, what I'm talking about is different than that. It had nothing to do with the the earth or shape of the earth or anything. What I'm talking about, one of his one of his most recent videos was promoting the alien theory, the alien, the extraterrestrials. I seen it. All that. So no, I don't know. No, no, I, I don't watch. I don't watch him. H hundreds of people like say, "Oh, you should watch Roger." When I talk about like mythology subjects, but you know. No point, really. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, he's um, he's that way. I like him, and we know who he is. He's Roger. You know, he's not like hiding. You know. Yeah, he's got he's got some awesome material, and yeah, yeah. vapor can if you would have done all that. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that name Corey Good before. Uh. Yeah, Corey Good was the dude that came up with. He's the one that started the whole the Galactic Federation BS, and he just, just recently in a court appearance. I don't know if you can find it right now. They may have shut it down. I'd have to look for it. But in court, he just admitted that it was a story. It was like a a book that he was playing out, and I don't know. It was just weird the way he explained it. And uh, I actually watched the video, but yeah, completely owned up to being completely. Like, we, we didn't. We didn't need a court decision. We didn't need a court decision. To, oh. to find that out. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. But just Where to hear him say it. Yeah. Somebody said, be careful with, with Billy Carson. Uh, he loves to sue people. He did a whole video on how he took some slanderers to court. Well, I mean, suing me would only do me good. It would only do me good. I have more help than you know. I'm not worried about somebody dragging me to court, especially if we can turn this into a farce about fact and fiction. If we can go through his sources, we can go through his material. If I can show my material to a judge or a jury and decide who's right and who's wrong, that would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be that would be awesome. I invite that. Tell the man to sue me. I'd love to yeah. take flat to a lawyer. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. yeah. That, would be, that would be like the ultimate embarrassment <laughs> for him. Go to court and find out. Well, I wasn't slandering him. I'm actually... Oh, calling him out to a debate that he refuses to engage. And then in court, before a jury of our peers, I would be able to lay out the facts of why what this man is teaching is absolutely comic book character style knowledge, adult fantasy. And that the man is suing me because I, 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 might be, I might be attacking his way of making money. And, you know, in a, in a court, I mean, you got to understand, man, I'm very experienced with triers of fact. I'm very experienced with the nuances of the law. I says, that I invite. You can tell Billy, go ahead and sue me. It doesn't even matter. We can get this out in court. 
see here. I don't know who TJ Hegland is. Mm. Nah. Carry good. Oh, Corey Good. Okay. Galactic Federation. Man. Anybody, uh, anybody up here on the stage right now got anybody they can add to it? What about uh, have you guys checked in, uh, the archivist with Analog? He does a lot on the subject of radium, and he just started in on the, the bicameral mine hypothesis of history. Yeah. Oh, so no, man. I, I know who he is, and I, unfortunately, the very my first contact with him was was negative because who he's associated with was really was really hammering me and attacking me and all. That. So I just kind of left him alone. I said, you know what? Well, we're all we're all guilty of association. So I just. I'm, uh, I just left him alone for a while, and then I went and listened to one of his videos, and I plugged him on my channel. I did a post and sent some traffic his way. I, I've been watching him, and I'm, I may I may pull him in and do a whole video with him because he he's doing the type of research boots on the ground that I like. He's going through the the old material and revealing what he finds, and for that he gets the archaic stamp of approval. As far as as far as personally, I don't know because I don't know how close he is to those uh, in his little circle of, of podcasters and friends that he really is because some some of them have been lay, been laying it off in me, you know. So I'm not, I don't know yet. It's still undecided. David Wilcock. Yeah, it's if only I'm like Hancock and Wilcock. You know, yeah, that name going on. Something yeah, like that. man. It's always the prefix. Quinky dink. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Heterosexuals. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> great, that's man. That's the, Michikaku. That is the best meme I have ever seen. That man. is pretty good. Oh, I can't even take it. Oh, is that Carl Sagan and uh, Neil deGrasse? <laughs> Heliosexuals. That's badass. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't been going you ain't been going long? Uh, Did you bring food back? No. What? You didn't tell me to. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Roger Mud Fossil. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's just yeah, I mean, we can't all agree on everything and it doesn't mean you're I not okay. Yeah, we're not gonna kick you out the club. Shoot. Shoot. If Roger ever wanted to come on Archaics and talk about his research, he's more than welcome to. Because like I said, the vapor canopy model of archaics can account for a lot of the anomalies that Roger has found. Yeah. I got someone. Adam Green. You know him? I don't know I don't know that name. Uh, Adam Green, no more news. He's not on um um uh, YouTube anymore. They've completely but he's the only other person that I know right now that really hammers that certain people group. Yeah, I know what, just show, what he really does is show clips of the rabbis and everything they're talking about and just the oh, things they're saying talk. currently. So, I don't know. It's uh, very interesting. I, I'd say just check him out. He's on Odyssey. I think the main place he streams on is Odyssey right now. No more news. That's what it channel is called. So. There's a couple of channels in my community that Man. spend three hours uh, cranking up moaning about you and me. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I it's uh, all. Matt, it's yeah, you're talking about Matthew Lacroix, isn't he? Also a follower of Sitchin, believing believing that these that these Sumerian kings were were superhuman, could live hundreds of thousands of years and stuff. Yeah. Oh, somebody just said that right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, uh, there, there. That, that's what I was talking about. The archivist is close to Doctor Longo. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you know what? Hey, ticky, ticky. You all. Uh, Like I said, I like the archivist. I listen to his video, but you know what? Sometimes, man, we just have to uh, stick stick with the folks we know. I mean, that's you know, we, if it's if it's down to that, where we're, where we're picking sides and stuff like that. Shoot, sure, you know what? To each his own. They suck. Let's see, both cocks. Cock handler. <laughs> yes, yeah. Jerry Curve. Hey, yeah, yeah, man. Cock handlers. <laughs> A lot of people saying Cliff High sued Corey Good. That's interesting. Would you guys do a video with uh, Steve Falconer, uh, Space Busters? Oh, oh yeah, man. I definitely. Know, I know that name. I've no, I don't know anything about him. No, nah, man. Stay, stay, oh, stay, stay. Yeah, I don't know that right either. Uh, he, they always say he's uh, uh, Shoot. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, convey, convey, convey the information. 
If, if the community agrees that he's somebody that's oh, they, that's they're, straight they're up, good guys. They're, straight the up, hell yeah, they come on our chance and talk about that. Yeah, they 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 have uh, given me stacks of sharks over the years. I they've been around for. I've donkey. heard the name. I don't know anything about Space them. Space they've, they've been around for years. They was flat earthers. They do Tataria stuff now. Uh, but they've done some good deep codes in the past. They've right. put real work on the table. Yeah. Oh, man, you know what? I was really disappointed about Greg Braden. Yeah, yeah man. I, I, I used to look up to the dude thinking, okay, he's got some spiritual material yeah. out there. But then I, then I hear some of his other things that are real, real mainstream. And, uh, but, then, but then somebody that I respect, John Nolan, who I've done two interviews with, uh, on the Inspired channel, John Nolan interviewed Greg Braden and asked him straight up, "Hey man, what do you think about Jason of Archaics? He doesn't bring he brings all this data to the table on these resets." And Greg Braden, yeah, you know, man, I, I think he lied. I, my personal opinion is, I think he lied. He said, "I have never heard of him, but over here in Gaia, we have pictures of this and this and that." It's like what? Not only did he say it real fast, but he turned around and directed the the attention to basically my arch nemesis. My arch nemesis is the Gaia Network. I'm going to deal with that in the future, too. I'm going to deal with it in the future. Gaia Network promotes almost every single fallacy for which the Archaics Channel exposes. Almost every single one. Oh. Everything on the Gaia Network it's are things true. that have been disproven in Archaics and from multiple different mathematical vantage points. So, yeah, I got, yeah, I got issue with that. He's promoting Gaia. I'm done, I'm done with, I'm done with Greg, Greg Braden. Yeah, guy is getting really old, though. You know, people like most truthers know that that shit's like weak. It's you know? weak, man. It's weak. It's piss weak, guys. You know, it's weak. It's adult fantasy. Well, it's you got a choice. You're gonna watch Seinfeld or you're gonna watch Gaia. They're both the same. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. it sure is. Yeah, it's that well, simple. My, remind me of who Michael Tsarion is. Is he an author? No man, he's YouTube. He does loads of content. He's been yeah. here years and years. Good dude. Um, I I actually couldn't comment one way or the other. I don't know too much about. Anybody it. know Michael Sorrell? Yeah. What, what's his um, thesis? He, he, he's big on the Irish origins uh, hypothesis. That's the guy I wanted to talk to. Yeah, the Irish origin. I need to talk to that guy. Yeah, I need to talk to that dude. Today. I need to talk to him about the the Book of Four Masters, Tuatha Day Dana, and the ancient Furbolgs. I need. The would you please make a note of Michael Cesario? Yes, no problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Matthew Lacroix is on the table. Matthew Lacroix is on the table. I don't mind talking to him, but I'm not. I'm not going to hear that bull. That shit's already been disproven, man. Those that the Sitchin version of Sumerian kings living that long. I'm not trying to hear all that. I'm not trying to hear all that at all, man. Jason is not stoned. I do not smoke at no, all. No, it does. At all. <laughs> just, just me. I yeah, am, dude. though. It's cool. I drink about two shots of bourbon a month, special occasions. Sometimes I never even finish it. You know, a Moonshine Jones, I'm not worried about somebody being Jewish. It's all. Uh, yeah, just like, just like not, not all the... Not not all the uh, Romans were bad. Not all the Jews were bad. So I'm not, I'm not worried about somebody being Jew. Them being Jewish is not off the table for me to as far as talking to them and discussing them. Yeah. Now, if they've got some real hardcore Zionist view, views and stuff, then I understand what I'm dealing with. And yes, it's off the table. Yeah. And Woody Allen was quite funny. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, Woody Allen and Spielberg, they pretty much ruled for a while, didn't they? Yeah, Woody Allen's films were absolutely nuts. <clears throat> Take the Money and Run, one of my favorite yeah. films. When he, he escapes from jail and he carves a gun out of soap and covers in boot polish and it's raining outside and he's just got a big load of foam. Yeah. <laughs> I've listened to Liberal Hive Mind. It's a good channel. I, they, they expose all that shit. I, li I like Liberal Hive Mind, but it's really not, that's really not... In the truther community, that's not no. that's not what we're talking about no, here. No, no. Yeah, liberal high mind is good. We're trying we're trying, trying to avoid politics Waters as much as possible. Above. Water. I don't. Somebody's mentioning there. I've done two or three shows I have done two. with Jordan. Waters above. I don't know who he is. I don't know his identity. Uh, I don't want to fall prey to another Soul Luckman situation where I don't know who I'm dealing with, and you know, I I, don't, I just don't know. Uh, so far, the relationship is good with Waters Above. It's good. Uh, but I'm not, we're, we're from different worlds. I'm not into crypto. I'm not into crypto markets. I'm not into crypto predictions right now. Uh, I just don't. I mean, he's got some other other, other content too, but 
Uh, I'm just not into the, the markets and politics and all. I'm just not in it. I'm trying to stay away from it. Yep. Yep, yep. I concur about that. Uh, yeah, since 2020, the entire world has been a, co a captured operation. It's, a, it's, not, it's, it's almost as if they don't even care anymore if you, that, that we understand that a lot of these are actors, people are wearing masks, no one is real in, in pop political theory, uh, the uh, political theater anymore. It's almost as if they do not care. And the shows that are being put up, put together in, in, in politics, elections, and all this stuff, international things, ongoings, the shows that are being put out now is for the collective because the collective are going to, going to believe in anything anyway, no matter how it's presented. So, yeah, hmm. huge, a huge dividing line began in 2020. And the separation between the two groups of humanity is getting wider and wider and wider every month that passes. That's what's happening. It, it seems Who's like there's been a, big, uh, a lot of slack on the leash on YouTube. Like, do you, do you think that's because the, the election and, and the, the vac? or whatever that stuff's all done so it can kind of go back to like you know they'll allow a bit more these days um say that again sorry yeah it seems like there's like uh um more slack on what you can say on youtube again like it, it seems like it really tightened up around the election and then with the uh with the vax or whatever yeah but it, it seems like it's chilled out a bit more. I just wonder if you guys had any take on that. No, YouTube has lightened up considerably on its oh, censorship. Yeah. You're, you're able to say a whole lot more lately. You're able to do a lot more. And I'm going to tell you why. There, I followed the model of many, many people before me when I created Archaics TV. YouTube sees our analytics and they understand just how much they're losing when we have to create separate channels for some of our content because YouTube is too restrictive. Mm -hmm. So they've been lightening up, but that doesn't mean I'm going to collapse Archaics TV. I got some awesome videos on Archaics TV. I can't put them on YouTube. I can't. <laughs> so uh, if I ever see that YouTube is totally censorship free, except for the stupid shit we know you get censorship for, yeah. just criminal stuff. If I see they do that, I will collapse Archaics TV and bring all that content here. But I don't see that coming in the near future. Yeah, me neither. I don't see it. Just don't see it. Uh, somebody's asking about Seven Bomar. Uh, Dawn contacted Seven Bomar because she knows him personally, and they've had some interactions in the past with conventions and stuff. Well, Seven Bomar has been watching Archaics, and he has invited me to a chat. We're going to do some talking. Hmm. Uh, I, I, it's always been in the back of my mind. I don't know. He's a real spiritual guy. Uh, comes from a totally different, different, you know, vantage point. But we have some crossover, and yeah, it's on the table. It's on the table. Don made that happen. Uh, we just have to get back in contact with him. Cool. You know who he is? No, I, I don't know. Let's see. Hey, what about Matt? What about Matt of Quantum of Conscience? You know who that is? Uh, yeah, Matt. Matt is, just keeps himself to himself, bro. He, he's fine. He's fine. Listen, Matt. Matt is. I'm gonna say it as best I can. To me, since I've been on YouTube, Matt was a huge channel when I first started. Same. He was a, Same. well. No, he was a big channel. To me, he's not a big channel to me anymore. No, I but don't. when I first started, he was a big channel. I used to look at Matt of Quantum of Conscious, and I, I used to listen to him from time to time. And but I was too busy doing my own thing. And uh, I grew and I grew, and more, more and more people were asking me, "What do you think of Matt of Quantum of Conscious?" But I'm a content creator. I really don't have time to review other people's material. Yeah. And at the same time, people were asking Matt. I know for a fact, many people ask Matt, "Hey, what do you think of Jason Archaics?" So I'm going to tell you now. Matt is is basically a content creator in a bubble. He doesn't do podcasts with other people. If, no. he, do, if he has, it's very infrequent. And uh, he doesn't really associate with anybody on YouTube. No. So uh, he's doing his thing. And I've got nothing negative to say about him, but he's a loner. He's a loner, and that's where he wants to be. That's cool. Uh, if he wanted to come on my channel and talk about uh, what he discusses on on, on um, uh Quantum, quantum of conscience. He's more than welcome. I've got, I've got nothing against Matt at all. I just don't know if he's going to come out of that shell. I don't know. I, some people are, some people are, 
Bud Fossil University. Roger's the same way. He's yeah. been in a bubble for a very long time. When he tries to come out of that bubble, he sees any resistance, he goes back in it. So I don't know. So uh, I'm all, uh, like I said, he's he's more than welcome. Uh, I we, can, we can set up a podcast. And I somebody, somebody clip that and send it to him. Because <laughs> he says he seems like a genuine guy. Oh yeah, and that's and that's what I'm about. Oh. I really don't care if you're not a data guy. If you're not a data guy like Ken Wheeler, if you're not a data guy like myself, I don't care. It's more the spirit behind what you, what you're talking about, yeah. what you're promoting. Do you believe in what you're promoting? Do you have something to bring to the table? Aha moments for other people. That right there will get you on my channel quick. Yeah, hey, I, I, I gotta ask this one real quick too because it just showed up the other day. But uh, do you know Jacob Israel? Have you looked at uh, any Jacob of him? Don added Jacob Israel to my list uh, of somebody to contact, so I'll be contacting him by email. Uh, I'll go on his channel, or he can come on mine. We, we can do a talk. I understand where he's coming from. Uh, you guys know I was a Southern Baptist for 40 years. I know that Bible. And you know I don't have anything against my former brother, you know, Christian brothers and sisters. I don't have anything against them. Oh, I like him. A lot of the archaics material, there's a lot of Christian crossover there. But uh, we might disagree on some salient points, though, but that's okay. We can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, he's on the list. Cool. Uh, yeah, I like him, too. Two long talks uh, Jason did on Bro Sanchez were great. They were fantastic, Shiva. Yeah, I did two long, yeah, long videos of Bro Sanchez. I like Bro Sanchez, I but if he's listening, I'm kind of discouraged with you, bro. Bro Sanchez, I sent you an email, and Don sent you an email wondering whenever you wanted to come on my channel. And we've got radio silence from you, brother. We haven't heard nothing. I have, oh, checked the, I have checked the emails frequently, so I invited you on my channel. I ain't heard from you, so so I'm, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll wait. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, he might just be busy. He That's what I was just going to say. He's, a, he's, he's say, swamped, man. Maybe he he's puts out more up. content than I do. Oh, God, I'm me. Yeah. He goes live every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he goes long, for sure. Yeah, yeah he's one smart chap. Yeah, I like Bro Sanchez. Yeah, he is. There was there were some guys in his community that uh that were in our chats that I wanted to bring on my channel, but I forgot their names, forgot who they were, and I seem to have lost contact with his community. I don't know what's going on. We'll figure we'll figure it out. Mm. There's a couple guys that, that were asking some they were asking the right questions. Two black dudes were asking yeah, one they were, the were tag teaming me. They were asking the right that questions. Really good. They had me in a flow and I was I was looking to do something like that, have have Bro Sanchez and his clique come on my channel and do the same thing. Yeah. You know, I'll go three hours. You they know, really knew your content. Yeah, they? they knew my material, so that's yeah. what had me going. So yeah. I, I was kind of looking for that. Yeah, I never that one. He was really well spoken. He was really good at uh, elaborating himself. Yeah. Hey, what, sure. what happened with Donut? Oh, Donut's awesome. <laughs> Donut's awesome. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, were you ever planning on something, doing something again? I know. Um, yeah, man. Hey, listen, man. Truth Mafia, I'm all, they're all right with me, man. Oh, uh, uh, what? Oh. Uh, Oh, why'd you say donut first, man? Tommy Truffle. Tommy. Yeah, Tommy Truffle and Donut. Yeah, yeah man. They ain't on no, they ain't, they're not on the archaic flat earth British shit list. In fact, no. Oh, we love them dudes, man. Yeah, them dudes are all right, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's see. Michael DeSorian wrote yeah. The Irish Origins of Civilization. I have that in my library. I haven't oh, read it yet. My. I have it in my library. That's really good. That's right. Cesarion was inspired by Jordan Maxwell. Listen, guys, I'm going to tell you a story about Jordan Maxwell real quick. <laughs> all right. My publisher, Paul Tice, who used to be Zechariah Sitchin's videographer, the man who owns the book tree, Paul, all his authors were dying. In, I'm, I was just being released from prison in 2016, and uh, I was excited because I was going to do an interview with Jordan Maxwell. And I'd already had four books published, and as soon as I got out, my publisher and, my, and, I, and myself I, I published four of them by myself. My publisher published four. And then my publisher published two more since I've been out. And then I went and published some on Amazon and stuff. So I have a lot of books published, but I was really excited about getting to meet Jordan Maxwell and do a full interview with him because my publisher made sure Jordan Maxwell had a copy of my book, The Lost Scriptures of Giza. 
This is what got me into the publishing world because my bibliography was so extensive. Paul Tice had never seen a book like this. He had told me, he says, man, I have never seen anyone put all this data from all around the world, all these ancient texts, and show that there's one synthetic teaching through it all about Enoch and the Great Pyramid and in our own personal immortality. And he said, this is fascinating. And the man you need to talk to is Jordan Maxwell. I've published two of his books. And Paul had a relationship with Jordan. As a matter of fact, oh, excuse me, I don't even know if I'm supposed to tell you guys this, but I have a whole collection of videos, private videos from Jordan Maxwell. On He's doing his dissertations and teachings that are in the possession of my publisher, and he's about to give them to me. And uh, I'm thinking about doing Jordan Maxwell clips and then my commentary uh, in a series of videos. But yeah, I was going to meet him. But his health, uh, everything got delayed because of his health. His health was terrible, and it just never got better. And then, then, I, then Paul sent me the, the news that Jordan Maxwell had died. But uh, yeah, Jack Berenger's gone. Neil Freer's gone. Hugh Montgomery, I think he's too old, or he's already dead. All the authors. Uh, 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 man, I can't remember her name. And just all his authors that he's published. He's even published, he's even published a book by Zechariah Sitchin. But all his authors have passed away. I'm the last one, so it's uh yeah. I didn't get I didn't get that opportunity. You said my ass, Mark Passio. I'm not sure who that is. Yeah, I'll ask that. Yeah, I did. Uh. Yeah, I know Waters Above, Waters yeah. Above, and uh, Logan of Decoder Reality, and myself. We did a podcast all together. It was good. It was yeah. really good. It was real good. I got nothing against Waters Above. He's not I'm on the shit list. He's not on the shit list at all. Fuck no. Let's see, it's lovely chat. Yeah, man. Bill Cooper. Yep. Yep. Well, you guys know I like David Ike. I like him a whole lot more now that he cited me. I would like to have David Icke on my channel talking about his Bats. new book. Just talking about his new book. And then maybe, you know, the first book that influenced me in the, ni in the 90s when I was still a real hardcore Christian is uh, Children of the Matrix. Oh, yeah, I read that. That's what got me asking questions. So about the exact same time I read Children of the Matrix, I read a new book that just came out that everybody was making a big deal about called Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. So, I read those two books. Then I read. <laughs> then I read. Y'all stop that. Move around. Cat fight. Don't move around. Cat fight. So. Oh. Uh, yeah, but I don't think David Icke is allowed on YouTube. I've searched for him and stuff, and yeah, I don't uh, think. No, that there's could no interview. Here. We did have that interview. We hey. obviously we got taken down, but I managed to download it and keep it. <laughs> Everything I searched is mainstream, right here for him. It's crazy. Oh, Jazzy. And two cats fighting. You can only find David Oak. David Oak can only find it on YouTube. Sorry, BitTube. Or awesome. other sites. Well, he yeah. can come on RK. He can come on RKX TV. If he can't come on YouTube. Yeah. Sure. No. I'll be down. That'd be epic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have his own platform. He he doesn't have his own website or, or channel or anything like that. He or does. He, he, he has. Jason he has it. He has his own his own website, but yeah, he's but you right. can only find uh, you can only find him on BitChute. Oh, BitChute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Larry Bird number thirty three says, "I heard Behold a Pill Horse is banned in jails. Ah. Listen, prisons do ban a whole lot of books." But when I was in prison, all it took is a little cash, and I could get cell phone, heroin, anything I wanted. It didn't even matter. It, it, whatever's available in the free world is available to prisoners. Back when I was in prison, I was yeah. doing a lot of dumb shit. I didn't care. I, I thought I was going to be in prison the rest of my life. I did not care about parole. I had even told the parole boards I'd do some parole board. I was going to do something violent to them if they brought me back up. All this. I told my story in, in videos on Archaics. I explained that they had, they had denied me parole so many times that I had told them, okay, look, 
we're at the point now that you have created the very monster that you pretended I was when I was 17 years old. So now you're going to deal with it. Yeah. I promise you, release me onto the streets, evil things are going to happen. And I kept this mindset for over 10 years before a pro board member named Jose Alceda came and visited me. He was a he was a member of the board, not just the little peons that work on the units. And he, he straight up told me, do you still feel the way you did when you threatened my board members? And I told him, I said, man, I was, I was younger and stupider and I was dumb, but I don't believe in your system at all. I said, I said, this whole fucking criminal justice system is a farce and you know it. He says, you give me 12 months with no disciplinary and you get off maximum security, I promise you I will let you out of prison. Listen, I took Jose, he, he might be listening to my videos. Jose Alceda made me that promise and I gave him 12 months with no disciplinary and I was out of prison just like that. So it's a... Uh, but I spent a long time in, in Texas prison doing what I wanted to do. And I, pretty, I, mean, I got every book, every book that I ever wanted to read, even books that were on the watch list, like, like, the, like the Unseen Hand. It's not allowed in Texas prisons, but I got it. Uh, the New World Order, it's not allowed. Uh -huh. uh, Synagogue of Satan, the complete history, chronological history uh, uh, of the Tiny Hats. I got it in prison. Uh, I also got uh, March of the Titans. It's the complete encyclo encyclopedia on the white race. That's the name of the book. Hmm. It's illegal. They don't even allow that in institutions in America and stuff. I got it in Texas prison. It's a. Uh, they like woke so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, got I'm all sure. David Icke's books. I got Same. all David Icke's books in prison. Me too. Yeah, man. Really inspiration. No yeah. doubt. About Jason, that. I have to. I have to. I have to tell you, it's funny you you mentioned synagogue of Satan. I'm literally reading that right now. That's my no book way. that I'm reading. What a book I recommend. Thank, thank you, brother. I, like that book is an absolute eye opener. It's an eye opener. Man. Yeah. Andrew Harrington, yeah. Andrew absolutely. Carrington Hitchcock has been threatened multiple times. There's been attempts on his life, all kinds of things. Yeah, man. Yeah. Th thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. It's just opened my eyes. I could really cream has. Cream How about uh, Eustace Mullins? You know he's a uniformitarianism. Believes in evolution, monkeys, all that shit. Oh, it's Don Neal? Yeah. Big bang. But uh, Michael Cremo, Arcanaut, you're right. Mark, Michael Cremo would be awesome Would be awesome to have on the channel. Now, he's uniformitarian. He's going to be different. But he's also a very unique branch of uniformitarian. He, he's a scientist. Therefore, he believes in the whole evolutionary model, all, all the Ice Age theory, all that crap is bullshit. However, he did co-write a book with Richard Thompson called... Uh, um, is it Lost Civilizations? Forbidden Archaeology. I got that book. For, it's, it's huge! It's fantastic imagery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Richard Thompson and Michael Cremo wrote this book, and yeah. it is fantastic on yes. all these archaeological anomalies, anomalies that, that completely defy the scientific model. It's good. Yeah, true. It's almost as good as my favorite book, Evolution Cruncher. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, Jason, uh, I've got a different book. Just like Evolution Cruncher, but it's like a a compilation of all the evolution shit by the same author. Forget what it's what is, called. What what is if you if you can uh provide that to the group somehow so I can find a link or so I'll find some way to buy that yeah. book. I just need to know where it's at. I'll, I'll I'll track it down. It's by the same author, but it's like compendium. It's like it's the same it's the same author, but it it is just just a a massive dictionary of evolution crunch, basically. Yeah, I will. I will, brother. I'll do that. I'll do that. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Somebody said, uh, David Icke has extensive bibliographies. That's another reason why he's all, he's all, he's on my, he's on my list. I promote David Icke because man, that's, that's my most important, my most important Thing that I look for in any author's book is if they're trying to show me something uh, new, then they need to have a lot of bibli bibliographic sources to show me where they got their material to put together this yeah. new construct. To put together this new construct is uh, something that's already Absolutely. well known by well known by the collective. You don't need a bibliography. We already agree on all these things. Yeah. So yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, David Icke, yeah. he does have good bibliographies. Let's see. Uh, Leviathan six, I haven't read Leviathan 666. Six, six. 
I haven't read that. Uh, so somebody mentioned Hitchcock. Oh, there's the third cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, what's going on? Or oh, if you include Alfred. Yeah, but two of them were shields. Um, I press you. AIX is perverse. It's Godfrey. Oh, here's here's that name again. Who is this dude? Mark Pesio. Mark Pesio. Oh, he's been out years. Literally talking years. So what, what is his there. thesis, though? Um, well, his truth, sir. Um, but it's more on like the mainstream sort of subject. So it'll be stuff out of the mainstream or what's relative. He's more a commentator than a researcher. Okay, that, that doesn't you take know. him off the list. No. I mean, he's got some spiritual material. No, what you say? Well, Phoenix Protocol. You gotta, what, you, what, What's that? What do you think? You, my past year, what, what, what's he on lately? Uh, he has a YouTube channel. I'm looking at it right yeah, here. Oh, cool, cool. Thanks, bro. Um, but I don't know about him. Well, if anybody, no, if anybody, anybody, sure. if anybody knows what his thesis is, I'll I mean, post it. Is, he, is, he a, is he an ancient aliener? Is he a, I just posted his channel. What on earth is happening? I don't know. That looks like a Ewar thing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. That's kind of how he posted it. How are you? How yeah, are you? I don't know much about him. Or anything. All right. Really. Well, thank you, Shiva Shampoo, for the Evolution Cruncher PDF. Anybody's welcome to come up here and enlighten us. Shiva, would you like to go live on Mandela Effect with me and Martin? Well, we discuss this, yeah. We should do that. That would be brilliant. Meryl Gigi, how you doing, girl? One of my best friends right there. Hey, this is uh, uh, Meryl Robert Seifer. He's the real deal. He's the real deal. He's not only an anthropologist. Uh, you, you already know that that's my pet peeve. These doctors, uh, the, these guys that have the, the collegiate background, uh, the credentials that allow them to say whatever they want to say, I do not put Robert Seifer in that. He does come from that field. He does come from that background, but he is basically telling it like it is. His channel is very good. His videos are straightforward. I got no problem with Robert Seifer at all. Uh, yeah. uh, um, his videos may be... Um, there's a lot more research involved in his videos uh, than like John Levy. John Levy has good presentations, visual presentations with his commentary. Oh, yeah. Robert Levy, come, uh, but, but Robert Seifer comes from the academic uh, field, and he brings a whole new quality to his videos. But what I find interesting is, is he's really, really anti-establishment on some salient points. Robert Seifer is somebody to pay attention to. He's going to release five or six general videos that keep his channel going, and then that sixth or seventh video is going to have some truth bombs in there, and this is why he's getting away with what he's getting away with. Mm. I like Robert Seifer. Interesting. Let's see. Spaz, yep, the unseen hand. It's mm. a book worth reading. Mm. Let's see, where was that? I'm looking, for, that was Merrill's, that was Merrill's, uh, I, I think I already passed it, Evolution Handbook. That was Merrill's uh, comment, but I lost my, my place where I was. Uh. Man, the chat is good, just like YouTube, man. Uh -huh. If you see, uh, Clayton, you still with us? Or, or Joel, if you, any of y'all, any of y'all uh, here can see Shiva's answer, we can't find one. This chest yeah. is insane. Yeah, it kind of got to the bottom. If, if Shiva answered about that live video, because we'll go live in the next day or so. We can go live tomorrow and do that Mandela Effect video. Yeah, I'm on. He said yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He, he highlighted cool. you here. Okay, cool. I can't. We're still trying to figure out Discord. Awesome. Yeah. There it is right there. Live with you and Martin. Yes, yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Hell yeah, Shiva. Oh, I'll see you an email tonight. I'd like to do that tomorrow. That'd be awesome. That'd be exciting. Okay, so here it is. Just don't bring up cops, military, or flat earth. Passio will lose his shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Uh, yeah, but that happens everywhere, doesn't it? You know. That doesn't take him off the table. Yeah. It just it just means we gotta be careful. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Seifert's good. John Levy's good. 
Hidden History pisses me off. Website. I guess we go. Hidden in. History website? Oh, yeah. Dallas Corbin. Oh, he's fucking me. Give him up, man. Give oh, him up. what a fucking twat. When I did the fascist video, he literally put it on and he's like, basically, somebody else had leaked Yeah, he didn't delete it. Fair dues. Really? And everyone in there got to find out, like, who really put it out. But until that point, he was, until somebody linked it later on, you know, he was sort of claiming, claiming it, you know. Fascists. So, yeah. And I've seen him do it with other people as well. You know, he's in history. He just, like, takes everything what he finds on YouTube, sticks on his website. Okay, so we have uh, polyester. Yeah. Maybe you overlooked my earlier comment about interviewing Jan Ott, the translator of the latest Orlin translations. Do you have a line to this person? Did they find something unusual in the Orlin translation that is different from the prior translations? I'm just asking, I don't know. Because the Orlin has an event that's dated about 307 BC that's described a lot like a Phoenix, a Phoenix event. Yeah. And 307 BC is exactly on the 138 year Phoenix chronology. Did you get sent the entire story recently off a subscriber in your email? What are you talking about? That what you just mentioned. About the about the oral end? Yeah. About being translated? Yeah. Yeah, somebody sent me so sent sent an email. I read it through, it was highly interesting. Yeah. I hadn't seen it before. I've, I've read the Oral End. I, I, I have a video about the Oral End. Yeah, I have. Because there's a, a there's a Phoenix episode in the Oral yeah, End yeah, so on my channel. Manly P. Hall. <laughs> Secret teachings off. Oh, look at that badass Phoenix yeah. t-shirt Greg G just posted. Look at that, man. Oh, what? You are not wearing that to one of my conventions. You are not going to out Phoenix me, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> what? Man, I'm gonna come in there wearing a shower curtain with a phoenix on it. No, what you need is pipes with real things. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. Yeah. That's good stuff, Jan. Fucking hell, look at it on the front. Yeah, that's, that's bad, awesome. man. That's bad. Yeah, that's badass. I just had those phoenix shirts made. Now I feel small. Yeah, I know. I love that. <laughs> that's good stuff. Uh, oh, he's so trippy. Hey, uh, Passio spends a lot of time scolding his own followers. Oh, does he? Oh, oh that sucks, man. That's Fucking terrible. hell. So Paul Cook is on the list. Yeah. We like Paul Cook. We do. Now, the problem is, is that Paul kind of made a couple mistakes, man. We're not even going to talk about it here. But, but it's the reason why he wasn't on our kegs, and we weren't talking to him a couple months ago. So, it's a... Uh, uh, he knows, knows what he did. But when all when all that blew over. All that blew over and he's he survived he survived like the ledge. the onslaught and Paul Cook is boots on the ground in Malta and in Egypt. Right now. We've seen the video clips. I've left comments on his videos. Uh when he gets back to the UK, we're expecting Paul Cook to come talk to us and let us know some of the things that he can't talk about why he's still in Egypt. He's already addressed that issue. There are things he's not going to say on YouTube why he's still physically in Egypt because he wants to make sure he gets he gets on the plane. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> Wasn't there someone else that was supposed to be going over to the pyramids? I think some lady was uh, if I remember correctly. Lady? I, well, I don't know, but I got a, I got a buddy I've told you all about. The, the, the director of the American Institute, Institute of Pyramid Research is Larry Paul. And I've got a couple of his books I've told you guys about. He sent me, well, he sent me a book about the Sphinx I read. And I even, I even showed it to you guys on YouTube and showed you some of the illustrations of the Sphinx. Uh, how the head was disproportionate from the rest of the body showing that it's been, it's been doctored. Um, but uh, he just re reached out to me like five days ago and asked me, for all my charts showing some certain data about the Great Pyramid. I sent him a whole bunch of charts and all that. I don't know what he's doing with them, but he's about to go to Egypt. He goes to Egypt like twice a year. And uh, he knows uh, Zawi Hawass personally. Mm -hmm. He's mentioned archaics in my research to Zawi Hawass. But uh, uh, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear back on what, what that was about. But he's, he's sharing a bunch of my, my uh, chronometry research showing that the calendrical the calendrical measurements in the Great Pyramid are real by, by the measurements of Sir Flinders Petrie. So that's all. That's all. The director, I never can get that right. Larry Paul, the director of the American Institute of Pyramid Research. Mm. You know Max Egan's on the list. <laughs> Max, Egan, Max, Max, Max Egan's the truth, guys. 
Well, this man right, showed me. This man showed me in this room right here. Right, yeah. <laughs> he showed me shadow banning. Uh, I told for some, for some of you who don't know what I'm talking about. The man showed me on BitChute, refreshed. He waited about five or six minutes between each refresh, and he we literally watched a video that he and I did. We watched the views drop off, drop off, drop off. As, as every five or six minutes, 25 to 45 new viewers popped in, but every time Damn. he refreshed, he lost five to ten. Yeah. He's the most trolled channel on bitches. Literally, well, we sat there for an hour, refresh, refresh. I said, I said, oh my God. He says, yep. He says, this is Google. He says, it's not BitChute because I know all the owners of BitChute and they know me real well. And uh, he says, this is Google. They are absolutely shadow banning. Right. That's yeah. how they did it. Yeah, they definitely do it. Crazy. Fritz Springmere, who's that? Uh, I don't know. Somebody saying about people who disrespected her. Uh, mm. Some uh, people know. Terry seems to know much about much. I know. <laughs> who knows what? Um, about Paul Cook and uh, disrespect. I really don't know the whole issue, Paul Cook. I know Paul Cook. It's, handles it's Paul not worth talking about, really. He those links on his videos that sent people that boy. Right, I think it's more than Michelle Gibson thing, isn't it? So, anyway, don't talk about that. All right, we'll leave it alone. Uh, it's not good. So. Somebody already asked about the archivist. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know who Tim Cook is either. I've seen a phoenix in a pyramid in Kazakhstan. Yeah, in the capital of Stana. Yeah, they've got a <clears> giant <throat> fucking thing going on there. I've seen that. You were looking at the capital. Hey, Shiva. What you got, brother? Wait. You're muted. Where's Shiva? Shiva's in the hospital. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah. I got you there. You can hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Let me get out of this room. Okay. Good. How's the sound? Sound good. Oh, cool. Good, good. This has been a fun hangout. Yeah, yeah, let's do that live. Let's do it in two days. Is that good for you guys? Man, it's perfect. We, we, we can do it anytime. Okay, okay. Oh, so this is not going to be recorded. This is going to be live then, right? Uh, okay, okay. So which do you prefer? I don't know. Well, what do you prefer? If we do it live, we have to specify the time. If Easy, we record yeah. it, we can do it any time. Well, after the show is over, well, after the show is over, uh, let's let's compare time zones and, and find a perfect time, and I'll go ahead and and post it live on the channel. Okay. Yeah, it'd be fun if Martin's there too. It'd be funny too. Yeah, yeah, Shiva. I'm a Yeah. He's got like a whole. You know, he's got other memories as well, right? He'll be like, "Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I know that thing," right? You know, because we all have different. You know, collective memories, right? We don't all remember the same the man, no, things. We just saw with the apostrophe on the S. Oh, um, the new Jack man. Daniels. Oh, there are many. Jack, yeah, Daniels. Jack Daniels. No, this yeah, is Jack part. Daniels. Doesn't quite look right. It's look crazy. It. It yeah, th there's a lot of things like that. There's that's a common thing, uh, like Bragg's Bragg's apple cider vinegar, right? Is Bragg's oh, with oh. an apostrophe S? Now it's Bragg. And there are people that are sitting there saying, hey, I have, a, I have a bottle in my cupboard from 15 years ago. And they run to go. They said, I know it's Bragg's, 100%. And they get it, and it's turned into Bragg now, you know, the one in the wow. cupboard. So, you know, it's, it's all, all kinds of <laughs> – it's one of those common things, the apostrophe with the S, either That's taking weird. it away or adding That's it. So crazy. So do you know, like, um, yeah, she yeah, dark side to the moon? Is it the dark side yeah. of the moon? Yeah, yeah what the fuck? <laughs> Did they fuck it? Hey, hey, no. Like, I was like, what the hell? It's, it's like the Bible. It, it's so iconic. I mean, millions of people looking at it. Okay, now a lot of them are stoned when they're listening to it. No, but still, but come on. I thought it was the, the, the... I don't know, I guess I remembered it wrong. What the hell? Are you serious? Hey, <laughs> listen, Kiva, listen. What this as Now... I have, I have explained in many of my presentations that the closer we get 
to a to a reset event the more and more these reality tunnels begin to unravel and they get edited so they catch our attention so we start waking up to the idea that we're in a construct we need to go into these details. We need to stop talking about Mandela Effect yeah. right now because we need to go. Oh, yeah, deep. we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because th there's, there's also a, a lot of them just seem like, um, like a tree scattering a bunch of seeds. You know, not all of them are going to hit right, and so it's just to get people's attention. But yeah. I start to think that they all actually have a meaning. Now you'll go crazy if you try to go into the meaning because there's literally thousands of effects. Then there's personal effects. There's probably millions of them, but of the well-known ones, there's hundreds that are like solidly like. Many people know, right? I am one of my mates. And you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 at this point, let's talk about it later. Yeah, let's talk, yeah, about, talk about it later. Yeah, it's going to be epic. <laughs> I'm really excited. Yeah, we're being woke up from the fact that we're in a machine. Yeah, simple as that. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. supernatural, baby. <laughs> Oh, funky prepper is definitely on the uh, on the table. We just he got sick for a while. Keep missing him. We need to talk to funky funky prepper. Oh, uh, he's got some good shit. Uh, he's he's always reporting on that dark stuff going on in the UK. Yeah. But uh, Logan Jason, he codes your reality. Yeah, we like him too, man. I do. He's all right. But the the material that he produces, Logan. On decode your reality, the material it produces geometry and all that. That's just more evidence to me that we live in a construct because there's more, there's all kinds of different ways to see the same shit. That's quite interesting. Somebody showing you the Mount Meru version of flat Earth, and apparently the sigil behind it is the Masonic, you know, like the sun and the moon, and it's like the com the compass, the Masonic compass is set yep. over it. So mm -hmm. is that suggesting that that model is? You know, Masonic setup. You know the mm -hmm. yeah, and it's got the black sun as well below. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen that. That is really interesting. You're, you've seen the movie Dark City, where at the gotcha. end they show the whole city's on a flat disc and it's a UFO. Yeah, exactly. Badass, yeah. Man. How would you How would you know? <laughs> it's badass. What's outside? Shell Beach. He's a mob for funky prep and decode your reality. Oh, that's oh wow. Meryl Gigi is asking about Carrie Cassidy. Oh, she blocked me from a chat once. Carrie Cassidy? Uh, Carrie Cassidy's attacked me, hasn't she? Yeah, she attacked me. No. Yeah, she's, she, she's, my like, chat she's like 100% Q. She's all in the Q and all that, isn't she? She's Gaia. She's fucking one of their guys. Oh, Gaia? She's she like Gaia? Yeah. David Wilcox and yeah, man. all of that gang. Oh, I've, I've got emails from people saying saying that Carrie Cassidy and somebody else were bashing me on something. Oh, no, program. they pretend they're all hippie and lovey and go on these oh. camps and all like, oh, darling, one another. And yeah. then they're like, you know... I can not sippy stuff's wicked on the bank account. So <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Diso it, disinfo it. Mer she, Meryl knows she, how to, Meryl knows how to get the chat. That's all Meryl's doing. She knows how to get the <laughs> chat know. all wired up. <laughs> That's terrible. Terrible. She, she's a bit opinionated. Yeah, man. Okay, I got I got one. I got I have a serious question. Just like I had a serious question with, with Mind Unveiled. Yes. I, I don't fair, know anything. Fair enough, fair I, I'm, I'm open to Mind Unveiled being the real deal. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm looking for any evidence in the community yeah. that, that would let me know that something more sinister is going on or they're the real deal. Now, I'd like to know, but I need to know the same thing about Static in the Attic. If you guys watch Static in the Attic, if you know anything about, about his presentations, in the past I've cited him twice. I, I don't yeah, know why. I used to watch him a long time, time ago. Nobody knows him, bro. It's not one in the community, and nobody knows. Is he, is he another isolationist? Someone who just keeps way, way to themselves? Because, right. because I know that many people have mentioned Jason of Archaics in his comment sections, and I'm just, I'm just wondering, uh, is this just somebody who's just pushing out material? There's a few minutes conspiracy, conspiracy, yeah, uh, us, and he's done some great content over the years. He really has. Yeah, but like I don't know, who he is. And he's never one of the community. You never see him in a chat feed. These people keep aloof. They keep the fuck yeah. away from the community. So, yeah, it seems like that's all they do is just content. They don't do interviews. Yeah. You don't yeah. see them in you know. Maybe they got a business, something like that, you know? Yeah. You know, there's people um, there were like one video a friend of mine made, and it was right, it right upset me actually. UAP channel, he's a fantastic content provider, and he was like, they're all fucking shills. Nobody includes me. My analytics are dropping. So I sent him an email and said, bro, fucking hell, that's really heavy, man. Come on my channel, I'll help out, like, you know. 
uh, but he just didn't think to get back to me for some reason. Greg G said, can you and Martin sing happy birthday to me? Today I'm 65. Well, you uh, get How many turning of the stars is that? Was 65 times 365.24. That's how many turnings of the stars it is. But as far as singing to you, Greg, no, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I, will, I will say this if you see, send Don uh, an email and say, hey, I'm Greg G, one of your new moderators on Archaics, I will give you the Archaics coin that was returned to us by somebody who had accidentally gotten two coins and we had already written it off. So I, was, I will send you that coin for your birthday. Yay. <laughs> oh. If I sing you a song, I promise you, it's not going to be happy birthday. That is okay. He questions everything. It's kind of a globe. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I okay. don't know anything about violence. There's no point saying what. Yeah, I've got that. nothing negative to say about no, static in the air. I just good. don't know anything about him. He yeah. seems very secretive. Yeah, that's it. So. All to himself. Yeah. I think I think that guy's serious for sure, but he he's not big on like the uh, former occupation of the Americas hypothesis. Yeah, he's a no shade on him at all. Like I, I respect a lot of his content. I think he's sincere. He, he's also a Cherokee, and I think that has I think he takes some of the party line on on like the Native Americans being like the only previous inhabitants. Gotcha. That's all I can really. Oh, do he, so he promotes that? Uh, kind of in a, in a sideways way. It, it seems yeah. like the evidence is just mounting so much in the community that he can't ignore it so much. But yeah. um, I, I think that's his, his position. Yeah, the official uniformitarian academic perspective is, yes, that Native Americans are the only ones here. So, but yeah, 100%, the Ohio mound builders were not, were not, were not indigenous. Uh, all the uh, we had a huge trade empire, and also the copper mines of Michigan and Ohio are vast. They're extensive. So there was an ancient civilization here that was mining copper and shipping it out to all points of the world. But yeah, there's there's too much. There's way too, too much, much from the 1870s, 1880s, and 1890s that show these redheads, these redheaded. Uh, people that were all over North America, and they were they were involved in extensive trade. And then the, then you have Barry Fell's research. You can't discount Barry Fell. America BC is his book, but he and he and William Cordes have documented all the Libyan, Cypriot, the uh, uh, Carthaginian, uh, Roman, and Egyptian artifacts and coins that have been found all over North America. So yeah, that's. Yeah, there's a lot of people been here. Mm. A lot of people. I think it's the old world. I think this place got Armageddon and it was partly flooded. Oh the yeah, map, well, I mean, completely show that. Well, I mean, know? yeah, we've got all all the all the real old stuff in the United States is far underground. Yeah. Rock Wall, Texas. Yeah. It's a megalithic, gigantic wall that goes 20 miles in length in a perfect rectangle. It's huge, and they try to do their best to hide, to hide this construction. Uh, Hevener, Oklahoma, two miles below the surface of the earth in Hevener, Oklahoma, in an old coal, coal mine. They shut the coal mine down because a wall collapsed and exposed a village of all black obsidian cubed uh, bricks. Walls and rooms and all kinds of stuff. This is two miles below the earth. Something catastrophic happened in ancient America. And it wasn't even that long ago. It was within 3,500 to 4,000 years ago. And then after that, we had all these people wander in, chasing buffalo and all. And yeah, and yeah man, they, they didn't build a civilization. They were nomads. And they just followed, followed the birds, followed the, followed the buffalo. That was long after this civilization had collapsed. Great. The, the archivist Great. talks about, I think, like four different like Genesis resets in the past. Is is that mm -hmm. ring any bells? Well, I th I think the the buildings that are repeated all over the world are all over America. What they call Tatarian style. Somebody put them there, and they weren't put there in the eighteen hundreds. That's for sure. This is from an older world. Yeah. Otherwise, are they why are they deep in the ground in mud? Why they got the front doors like fucking meters underground? Why are the windows half buried? Why are these buildings disproportionate? They all look top heavy. 
What about all the massive Phoenician architecture on the top of them all that nobody can see unless you're in an air balloon? Yeah. You know, there's a d billions, you know, we, we've um, decoded a lot of stuff that there was an ancient civilization not long ago, a golden civilization that was worldwide and America was the hub. You know, some people suggest it was America Atlantis, you know, mm -hmm. you know some sort of other Phoenicians there. You know, Phoenicia, Phoenix, Phonetics, Foam. Bonies, you know, the whole thing is interesting. Yeah, mind blowing. I so, think. somebody's asking about Michelle Gibson. What does she What does she promote? Well, what I think is different people in consciousness can discover the same thing at the same time. Some inventions they say were discovered in different countries exactly the same week and were painted in exactly the same week. So that. Could happen, but Michelle Gibson, she's been, she's got a lot of subs, but she's in America, um, and she does, you know, she's renowned for circuit board cities, um, which I've been talking about since twenty. Oh, you showed me your videos. Martin's got some videos, five and a half years old, about circuit board cities. Mm. But, uh, I use Piranesi's artworks as evidence, and um, I and then the mo and then I revamped it about three years ago. Mm -hmm. I showed over images of Las Vegas and modern cities, and showed you that they look like exactly like circuit boards. And then you know proposed that you know this place was you know old sites like Pesothelus and Belbec, mm -hmm. you know literally look like circuit boards from above. Uh, so I proposed that, you know, even in ancient times, you know, computers had meltdowns. Was that what happened to this? The whole thing was, you know, compulating some sort of, uh, you know, it was compulating something. What? Consciousness? Was that what it was doing? But, yeah, so, and they use that in the modern day as well, the same circuit board layout, you know. Because mm. you get 20,000 people in a skyscraper, okay? Mm -hmm. And people give off 2,000 volts of electricity at their peak, which is around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And this can be absorbed into the environment. Now, plugs that take, you know, deliver our electric, that's biodirectional. It could be that when you're 20,000 people, it's feeding electricity into the system rather than producing it. And we are the batteries, like the film The Matrix says. So I just put that out there as, mm. as an idea. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so well, somebody says she promotes Moorish civilization was worldwide. Well, I, I'm going to have to disagree. Uh, in Spain, the Moors were prominent, okay? They of course they were. North Africa, and part of France, that. and all of North America. And then the Spanish moved on uh, to apparently build the colonial buildings that you witnessed in Mesoamerica, etc., okay? Which might have a Moorish feel to them. But as for the Moors, I, I haven't seen any evidence of the Moors... Um, Ruling in any class. Were the Moors, anyway. Moors red-headed? No, the Moors are North African. They're from like the, the Morocco. Skeletons, the skeletons they're finding all over North America. All over North America, the skeletons that have been found have been red-headed. Right, so the, I, I, I showed them an old atlas called uh, Cosmography, and it's from the late 1400s. It's a coloured, brilliant, illustrated book, and it shows um, the occupants of America are called the Floridians. They're seven foot tall, bright red hair, um, giants, they uh, um, nothing like what you would akin to Native American Indians in the modern day. Where they come from? Listen, Jim, later, later. Jim Bogler, Jim Bogler says, yeah. Unearth with Scott Walter, forensic geologist, has an episode about Rockwall in Texas. Listen, is this, a, I don't know if this is the same geologist, yeah. but I contacted people in Rockwall, Texas and said that Martin of Flat Earth British and Jason of Archaics are intending on coming to your city, and we would like to know the locals that have the most knowledge about Rockwall. Well, this woman said, listen, I'm going to send you an email. Uh, this man is the one who knows everything. As soon as I called people in Rockwall, I was given disinformation instantly. They sent me to a geologist who had done, who had excavated just a small section of, of the wall that he claimed this was evidence that the whole 20 miles of structure yeah. was, was, was natural. Geological. And it's not. Yeah, it's not. Because this geologist doesn't, it doesn't admit to pictures that Martin and I have 
of the original Doll excavation. Frames, yes, they had windows with keystone arches. Yeah. They had uh, the keystone. Well, that wasn't a keystone arch, but it was a keystone in the top of a square yeah, window, like window ledge. Yeah, they stuff in that. It was just yeah. crazy. Megalithic blocks yeah. and testimony from the original, the original people that the wall is sometimes 40 feet tall and 12 feet thick. Wow. Dude. This is a super construction that's buried in that area of Texas. This geologist takes a small section and then shows up, well, this is natural, this is this, and this is that. It's all BS, it's all misinformation. This man, if he would have been honest, he would have shown the original excavation photos from the 1800s, which show that this was a super construction. So, so the misinformation campaign is already well in effect in Rockwall, Texas. Okay. I don't think we would be welcome somehow. <laughs> yeah, we thought we'd be welcome, but yeah, they're already trying to promote that whole, that, all that BS. Yeah. Crazy. So crazy. Mm. Like Petro Petroglyph Monument. Yes, the whole history of the Khans is not what you think. Nah. This would have been your Tartarian Empire. The Khans were almost all Caucasian. It's all, yeah, it's a totally different history than you think, guys. Totally. In the, in the history books, the cons are described that way. Yeah, it's, now, now I'm talking about in the history books of the time, back then, but now the redacted histories that we have today, we're told, we're told Mongolians were, 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 Stupid. were, 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 were uh, <laughs> all, okay. you know, or of Oriental, you know, provenance. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not true. It's not true. Yeah. Not true at all. I know. Let's see. Let's infiltrate Rockwall, like Alex Jones, Jones did Bohemian did. Grove. <laughs> <laughs> I remember yeah, that, man. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Some somebody got their ass kicked out of our cage group today. Oh, unnecessary comments in the Arcade's Facebook group. Because somebody said that Alex Jones cited Jason and all that. I don't believe that's true. My email would have blown up if that was true. Yeah. What it was, was this person probably saw the Greg Reese piece that features my material. And uh, because it is shown on Alex Jones uh, platforms uh, about my 2046 mine long count decode. Mm -hmm. but, but they took that as Alex Jones just plugged... Uh, uh, Jason of Archaics and it started a thread on Facebook this morning and people were getting toxic and uh, uh, yeah somebody got their got their butt kicked out of Archaics Facebook behind that this morning but that was a misunderstanding that didn't happen that was a Greg Reese deal Let's see yeah, so oh, ca oh, Project Camelot. That's right. That's what Kerry Cassidy was in. Kerry Cassidy, Project yeah, you Camelot. Got, you got yeah. it. Yeah. Early you got Project it. Avalon was awesome. And early Project uh, Camelot was good. But yeah, I used to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good intro with the... They have some really good old interviews in there. But oh, uh, you know what? You know you know when I started realizing I was on the money? David Nino Rodriguez interviewed me twice. But I was, but I, but after that, I did the expose on Juan Osaven. David David Rodriguez has never emailed me since, mm. and he's in, he's in that group. I mean, I love David. David, I, I believe he's a fellow Texan. I believe he's a real truther. I believe his heart in the right place. But I believe he's been bewitched by this dude Juan Osaven, and he really believes this 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 uh, whole this whole political narrative. Mm. Yeah, man. So I just uh, it's, it's all it's crazy. Whole thing I, I actually never even heard of that dude until you mentioned him. That's how little I know about O Wano Saving. Yeah, man. Care about Wano Saving? I don't care about that whole Patriot pacification program. Listen, when Trump stepped down and they let Biden become president, the entire world was caught off guard. Something else had happened behind the scenes. And you know, you know what? I don't care about all that posturing. Trump was cool with that. He was playing a part. That was part of the narrative. He's playing his role. So, you know, I heard somebody else say that, oh man, it's all it's easy to see. They just offered they just offered Trump, you know, safety in the underworld in one of their facilities. Hey man, play the role, dude. This is what we're gonna do. We still need to fleece the American public for billions to help continue to fund all this. Uh, uh, stuff that we're sending to the underworld. I said, I mean, listen, anytime I hear about a mainstreamer getting accused of rape, 
going to Guantanamo Bay. Anytime I hear uh, somebody got killed or gone, somebody died of an obscure disease, uh, somebody's disappeared, they're, uh, they've moved to another country. Listen, guys, anytime I hear something like that, in my mind, it translates, you're, we're done using you for our narratives. So now you can safely go to the underground city down there and you can go ahead and live out the rest of your days. If we need you anymore up here, we'll use one of your body doubles. So, yeah, man. I think they're propping up messiahs for this whole age that's coming, or they're trying to attempt it. Elon Musk, Trump. I don't know, a lot of things that happen with Trump getting arrested and stuff, people, I've seen the community liken it to, you know, biblical things. Uh, so. I just find it fascinating. Trump will be back in next year. Why do you want to be happy? You watch. <laughs> yep. Yep. Trump will be back in next year, maybe, and then bring in the American Golden Age, and you guys are going to see what I predicted about the Christian Reich the ultra, the ultra right Christian right coming in and uh, setting the stage for the next great war, which is going to be Christianity and Islam. Okay. I predicted all this two and a half years ago. Those those videos are still up, and I'm still holding to that narrative. It's all going to happen. It's all just theater. Yeah, it is crazy. It's all theater, guys. Yeah, it's all theater. But you know what? Keeps the four, to four, busy. four to five, five to six, six to seven. I believe it's chow time. Oh. I believe that we have already gone over three hours. Holy shit. And I'm glad Adam is okay. That he didn't he didn't suffer anything in Morocco. What you know, uh we Adam 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 does the IT and okay. he's, kind of, he's kind of the leader of the archaic group with the Phoenix Protocol. Awesome. Adam Adam does a lot of the IT and the tech work. This is Adam right here. Oh, that's good. I mean, and, uh, nice one. I yeah, he always makes sure I get a copy of the video when we're done. It's uh, He lives in Morocco. so Sweet. I'm glad you weren't a part of that earthquake activity that happened, Adam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, everything's fine, yeah. That's good, man. That's cool. Good. Cool place to oh, yeah, yeah. Three hours, two minutes, yeah. Yeah, we're ready to we're ready to wrap it up now, bro. We're we're done for the night. Glad you guys listening to our rant. Yeah. And uh, this will go on YouTube. So if there's anything that we failed to mention or, or any more channels that you want to mention, by all means blow that comment section up. Yeah. We will we will answer the comments. Yeah, man. Well much love to you guys. We'll talk to you later. We're right. gonna go ahead and start out. Take care. And we're going to go ahead and sign out, man. Should I ask you about? We're going to look up soon, bro. Okay. Talk to you guys hey. soon. That'd be wicked. It was a lot of fun. Laters. <laughs>